You're listening to the best oldies on the radio. It's AM 1230 KXO. It is a Friday night here in the Imperial Valley. That means high school football is on the air. Get ready. It's Imperial Tigers taking on Valley Center. Now let's go down to the field with Mickey Dale. Imperial Tiger football is on the air tonight. The Imperial Tigers host the Cibola Raiders from Yuma. Imperial Tiger football is on the air tonight. The Imperial Tigers host the Cibola Raiders from Yuma. Mickey Dale and Dylan Nichols will have all of tonight's action coming up on KXORadio.com. Tiger football on KXORadio.com is brought to you by El Sarape Restaurant, the Imperial Tiger Football Association, 8 and Express, the Broken Yoke Cafe, Julie Oliver of Dickey Insurance Services, your Imperial Valley All-State agent, the Imperial Quarterback Club, Brickhouse Deli, and the Imperial Valley College. Let's go to the field for Imperial Tiger Football on the web at kxoradio.com. With the opening kickoff, here's the voice of the Tigers, Mickey Dale. Well, thank you, Carol, and welcome to Imperial at Shimamoto Simpson Stadium at the campus of Imperial High School for Tiger football. I'm Mickey Dale, along with me, George Grijalva. Yes. I can see you back. again. It's so good to be back. I said, it's been a while. You said two years ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> two years. not really for be us, but oh, for speaking. radio purposes, yeah, it's been a couple of years since <laughs> we've been on, so... We're glad to have you back. You're feeling well? I'm doing fine. Thank Good. God. Yeah. Good. It wasn't fun. That isolation is the killer. You yeah, do no, you don't want to get it. That's I did no pain, no pain, no uh, illnesses, but it was no fun being isolated. One, one of the things you just don't want. To. Oh, you, don't, you want don't want to get it. You don't want other people to get it either. No, that. no. Yeah. That's my story. I'm going to stay away one more week last week, Yeah. so I didn't bring it up here. Right. Good. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. So we appreciate you coming back, and thank you for Dylan Nichols stepping in for oh. us last week. I don't know if you heard at the beginning of the game, he was talking about that he's going to be announcing Arizona State football yeah, game. Yeah, you wrote it down. Right, I wrote it down, so yeah. I'll be able to give it to you, and we'll take a listen to him and see how Dylan does as he's going to the Walter Cronkite School of Broadcasting at Arizona State in Tempe. So we're excited about hearing how he's stepping up into the next level and yeah. see how he does. Looks like it's almost like Hawaii night, our cheerleaders. Oh, yeah. i got flowers and uh Around their heads. Around their heads. They're yeah. wearing their day. Yeah, so that's kind of neat. It's beautiful to see. right now. We know it's hot out there, but in here it's beautiful. And just looking out to the west is gorgeous. It is. A lot of clouds out to the west, uh, to the south. There was a little bit of uh, dust and stuff, but the dust isn't affecting us here. There's a very little wind at all at the stadium here in Imperial. Sun's out, about ready to hide behind the mountains. We won't be looking into the sun for very long. The Pride of Imperial Band is in the north end zone getting ready to come out to entertain the Imperial faithful. There's a few coming over from Valley Center, but uh, we should have a good game tonight. Hopefully a second victory in a row for the Tigers as they had a good one last week. Tigers coming off a convincing 41-14 to win over Cibola High School of Yuma last week in their home opener. It, that was, I was looking it up going over scores and stuff, that's the largest margin of victory for the Tigers at Imperial against the Bola. Really? Ever. And the whole time that they've played. Well, yeah. and, and how many victories against them, did you say? Uh, I think we're 5-5 five and five against five, them okay. now. I think we're even up with it. But that was the, the biggest total against the Bola, a margin of, of victory for Imperial over Cibola. So that was nice to see. And Seth Shaw, I'm sure you're familiar with him. Um, I, I met him once or twice. But he once yeah, or twice. Yeah, yeah. once or twice. <laughs> Yeah, he had a heck of a game. He had a, had, game right had a terrific game. He rushed for 35 yards, scored a touchdown, added another score by way of a 45-yard punt return, and nobody touched him on that way. No, no. He rounded out his sensational game with an interception and a 25-yard return. So you talk about someone that does about everything. Seth did it in that game. Well, he, he had a game. I told yeah. him he had a career career night right there, right. and we're just getting started. Right, and we just want to see a career night every time he comes yeah, every, right? yeah. Just keep getting better and better yeah. and better. Quarterback C.J. Tiernan, C.J. Tiernan, C.J. Tiernan. C.J. Tiernan. Christopher, yeah. Christopher, C.J., here we go. Yeah. Good market, great boys in running the offense. He threw his first touchdown of the year to Alejandro Perez and scored his first touchdown. He totaled 98 yards in the game, by the way. He, right? oh, he did, he did well. a great, just a terrific job well, in, in the option, and a couple of times completely faked me out. Yes, yeah. completely I, I heard it. I heard you guys. But it wasn't just me. I was looking on uh, 
on Max Preps and they were showing highlights of the deal. And on one particular day, they followed Jeremiah Naylor with the play action fake as he was rolling to the right. Said, "Well, what did it just mean? It was me and, yeah, and John uh, and Victor over." Right. Yeah, they were good. <laughs> oh, wait, where's the ball? Right. He's on and the other side. Same thing. He said, Oh, Nader's got, no, he didn't. You know? <laughs> so, anyway, he did a great job with the option last night, and we're looking for great things from CJ. So, it's Valley Center. They're on the field right now. They're on the south side of the field, allowing they were on the north side. It's nice to know they just moved over to the south side so our band can come in yeah. to play there. So, they moved over. And, you know, we've always got good hospitality when we're in Valley think, Center. You know? Yeah, I've just seen the coach. He is so nice. Such yeah. a nice man. But you were talking about their stadium. Mm-hmm. I went up, the grandkids and I went up for the track meet, the fi- CF finals. Mm-hmm. All the orchards are gone. Yes. They're up this thunder. So really? I, I, I wanted to ask him what happened. Yeah. I, oh, wow. Nobody knew. They just knew they were all gone, but they didn't know why. Oh, wow. Because that's one of the things. Kind of right. Yeah, we're, were, we're sitting up above the rolling hills. They could have gone and looked beautiful. at it. Oh, one of the most beautiful sites there. It really is. At least it's a beautiful place. place. Yep. We're just about 12 minutes away from the opening kickoff of tonight's game. We'll be back with more of our pregame show in just a moment. Start the day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee. Next door to the Brickhouse Deli. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blend drinks, or cold drinks. Including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, the Brickhouse Deli with big, bold, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at Felisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 760-355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Start the day off right by having breakfast at the Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in Imperial Valley by you, our customer. Thank you. Now remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. Mickey Dale and George Grahama and Imperial with the Tigers taking on Valley Center, a higher Division Two team. The Tigers aren't Division Three. The Jaguars come into the game with a one and two uh, seasonal total. Their lone victory a seventeen to six win over Brawley. They had a home opening loss to Santa Fe Christian, thirty eight to twenty one, and then were shut out twenty seven nothing to powerful Mount Carmel last week. Okay. Head coach Rob Gilster is in his thirty third year. Wow. of coaching at Valley Center. I don't think there's a coach in San Diego County CIF that has been at the school longer than him. And had more wins than him. He's right. How many CIF championships? Uh, five championships yeah. there. Yeah. Done well there. Yeah, these are very good. And that's talking to Stephen, my grandson. He's, he's one of the coaches on the coaching staff now. He's saying they're not flashy, but they are solid. They do not make a lot of mistakes. Well, one thing I think when we were both growing up playing sports, it was always fundamentals. Do the fundamentals. And that's what they do. They do nothing flashy. Nope. It's just fundamental football. They try to force you into making errors, and then they will capitalize on the errors. So that's what Valley Center is good at doing. They're part of the Valley League, which includes Division II San Pasqual of Escondido, Division Three schools Escondido and Ramona. Ramona's in the same division as us this year. Kind of what? surprised me, yeah. They moved them down to Division Three. They were up in Division One just a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Anyway, Ramona, along with Division Four, Rancho Buena Vista, they've dropped down a division since we last saw them up there. And then Division Five, Fallbrook. They're led by running back Lucas Dinaway, who ran for 137 yards and scored three touchdowns against Santa Fe Christian and against Brawley in the game that they had. He had every carry that was made by Valley wow. Center that night, 26 of them. He did them all for 140 yards against Brawley in that game. So, yeah, he's a, he's a hard-nosed runner, one that we're used to seeing at Valley Center. They always have somebody that can get in there and just put their shoulders into it and go. They've had trouble throwing the ball this year, haven't quite settled on a quarterback, so you're both senior Marion Bender and junior Colton Paxton mentioned tonight. And we'll look at the other games involving Valley schools as our pregame show continues in just a moment.
Tate McPress in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's the place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice-cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, keg, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a buck with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Aiton Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. We all love an expert. We've got a roof expert, a plumber, a great mechanic. The list goes on. Imperial Valley Allstate agent Julie Oliver is your local insurance expert that knows the community. You'll get advice that you can trust to help you select coverage that's best for you. So whether it's protection for your car, home, boat, motorcycle, or more, Julie is here to help. Call your local Allstate agent Julie Oliver today at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Julie says, please stay safe and healthy. You are in good hands. Subject terms, conditions, and availability. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960 If you're interested in helping out, go Tigers. Welcome back to Imperial High School as the Tigers will be taking on the Jaguars of Valley Center in about six minutes for the opening kickoff. I want to welcome Lee Elder, our Eastern Time Zone representative, yeah. who's checked in from Talmadge, Ohio. 59 degrees there. Ooh. Wouldn't that be nice? Wow. That a game time was supposed to be about 100, although with the clouds, I think it's a little cooler than that. It's going to be hard not to look at look the clouds or look at the neat yeah, formations that we have to the west. That's, that's one thing. We have some beautiful sunsets here. They really do. Gorgeous. And Kyla's listening from up at Twin Falls. I said, make sure that you put down your temperature. So. I'm waiting for your temp up there, Kyla. we got to see what kind of temperatures are up in Twin Falls. So uh, we welcome both of you to our broadcast tonight. In other games involving Imperial Valley Schools this evening, defending champion Central Spartans are on the road to take on Vista after a loss last week at Palm Desert. They're 1-2 and two on the season. The 2-1 and one Calexico Bulldogs host Yuma tonight after convincing wins against Castle Park and at Calipatria last week. The Raleigh Wildcats look for the... Two wins in a row after racing past Indio last week in Riverside County. And Southwest is idle tonight, but they will host Copa High of Yuma tomorrow night, a game that you can hear live here on KXO Radio, 1230 a.m. and on the Internet at KXORadio.com. Carol Buckley and John Driffle will be at Mike's side for that game tomorrow night, Southwest and Copa. In games involving Desert League schools, the unbeaten Hopeville Vikings host Maranatha Christian tonight will be visiting the Kara Capital in just a few weeks, too. Benson Memorial will look for a second win in a row as they travel to San Diego County to take on Castle Park. It's a Calexico beat earlier this season. Calipatri is idle tonight. Palo Verde will be hosting the Morse Tigers tomorrow night. Imagine Morse, Morse going all the way over to All Pest. the way to. All the way to Blythe. Blythe. Yeah, and that's something. It'll be a one-time trip. <laughs> they got, yeah, they got a favorable. Uh, <laughs> Palo Verde got a favorable schedule on that one to get Morse to come out here. Granddaughters yeah. are waving at us <laughs> and smiling at you yeah. <laughs> i love it we're just seconds or actually minutes away from the opening kickoff here tonight the imperial tigers and the valley center jaguars the tigers getting ready to come out on the field now in all red uniforms with white trim david felix okay. said, we sound great glad to know that i'm glad to have you here tonight with us david david kick for us uh, what are you david about 25 now yeah. About seven, eight years ago, he was our kicker here. Okay. Kicker. Tigers Kickling. coming out on the field now, all red uniforms with white numbers on the front and back. And Jeremiah Nader once again bringing in the American flag at the front of their trip as they come from underneath the grandstand and out into the middle of the field through the Tiger Pride of Imperial Band. And uh, they are set to go on one side and on the other and all white with dark black helmet and a Jaguar on the side, very similar to what the Jacksonville Jaguars have. The Valley Center team will be in all white tonight with the green and black trim and the black helmet. And we can see their numbers pretty good right yeah. now. Yeah, we can see both teams. That was good last yeah. week too. So far this season, we've had good numbers to look at because it hasn't always been 
that way, as you know. So it's good that we, we have some legible numbers. It's not easy for guys who are getting old. Don't be very good that. anymore. I was got, telling, yeah. now talking to Reese's. A brother, Jet, uh, and I told him, hey, we need you up here. We need your eye. <laughs> you right. tell us we need a spotter because <laughs> it's not easy for us. So we're just a few minutes away from the opening kickoff, and we'll be back with that kickoff in just a moment. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From the special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos, yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great. The service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarape. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. Imperial Valley College is welcoming students back on campus for the fall for an enhanced mix of in-person and online learning and student services. Enrollment is in full swing with classes already in session. Programs will feature an enhanced schedule of in-person labs and hands-on skills training with the option to continue taking a wide range of courses online. Students curious about degrees, available programs, and career paths can learn more by visiting imperial.edu and careered.org. Start the day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee, next door to the Brickhouse Deli. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from, hot drinks, blend drinks, or cold drinks, including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, the Brickhouse Deli with big, bold, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. So it's the Tigers and the Valley Center Jaguars in action tonight here at Tiger Stadium. And just looking up at the clouds, I just think it kind of reminds me of the old Fox and Crest theaters that had the the different uh, colors that were on the ceiling as you would come in that was kind of in a shape like this. So those of you who went to the Fox or Crest way back when, I know you were a little older than I was at that time. I was a young you buck. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, if you think about those theaters, for those of you who may have gone years ago, that's kind of like what the sky looks like right now. It's kind of cool to look at. Both teams have gone to the east side of their field now in uh, preparation for the opening kickoff of this game. Twin Falls checks in with 63 degrees up there. Kinda, that's kind of nice. Says a storm is coming through, and she is happy you are back. Oh, thank you. She's been I'm listening so happy to be back. There. So happy. Not sure if we're at Platt has checked in or not, but Roy has been listening from Texas. So he was listening to us last week. I already have one score. If you want to update the opening score already. Oh, Castle tonight. Rock. Or Castle Park. Though, right? Castle Park. Castle yeah. Park. 7-6 over Vincent in the first quarter right. already. And Calipatria, I understand, will be playing on Saturday. Like Adam is being idle. They're actually playing on Saturday. They've been adding and taking away from their schedule throughout this season. The captains come out of the field now, Seth. Shaw, one of the captains for Imperial, along with Alejandro Perez and uh, Andres Gastelum and quarterback C.J. Tiernan. And on the far side, the captains for Valley Center include Tyler Hake at one side and their quarterback possibly starting, Marion Bender, although he does go both ways at times. Also looks like Ernesto Gallegos is a starter. And uh, the running back that you'll be hearing a lot tonight, Lucas Senaway, is out there. He's not very big at five foot eight. But if you he look at it, pretty big. No, he's not very big, but no. he's a tough hard nose runner. So, okay. And the other captains they have, they have nine of them out there, is Malachi Takbian. And that's the captains for Valley Center as we get ready to open up this ball game. Yeah, hopefully we can have the same kind of a offensive output that we did last week. Uh, CJ looked excellent back there. Oh, he, he, he looked the right so read. comfortable back there last week on the play action especially, yeah. but even with the passes that he had, he didn't rush himself. He took his time, found the receivers, and hit them, and did a really good job. So we're real proud of the way he did on the field, the flip of the coin, and it looks like Valley Center won the toss, and they will decline the football to start this one out for the second week in a row. The Tigers get the football first. They'll be going from the north. It'll be going to pass on your tablet or phone dial. Or radio dial. We can add radio this week as you're listening to the action on KXO Radio AM, El Central California, 1230 on your dial. 
I'm going to have trouble not looking at the sunset tonight. <laughs> all the colors keep changing on us. Look at that. It's just beautiful out there. Like a peach. Did you see the clouds that came through yeah. earlier? Yeah. Over to the west. It was ugly. Yeah. I thought it was going to move this way. Yeah, it was okay. raining, raining up in the mountains earlier this afternoon. And I kind of thought once it started looking like it was getting darker here through the windows that it might rain here, but it looks like there's going to be no chance of rain at all and really a comfortable night for football. That shot will be coming on the near side, deep to receive for the Tigers. And on the far side will be Dominic Suarez. We had a pass reception in the opening game up at West Hills. You didn't have to look at the twin, the dual color blue field. You got, I didn't get to see You didn't have to. I didn't get to see You didn't have to readjust your eyeballs for that one. <laughs> that two-tone blue that they yeah. have at West Hill. I, I did see the, I, the picture that you posted on Facebook. That's hard to get used to no matter what. Yeah. Jeremiah yeah. Sinaway will be kicking off for Rob Gilster's Jaguars, and they'll be going again left to right on the kickoff. The Tigers running right to left as they open up the game with the ball. Tiger band strumming the drums. The Ball is kicked up and going deep. Dominic's going to let it go through the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and the Tigers will have the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. That was a pretty kick. It was. By number 21, Jeremiah Sinoway. 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 C.J. Tierney will be a quarterback for the Tigers. That shot will be one of the running backs. He goes in and out with Jeremiah Nader. So you'll see hear both of their names a lot. Dominic Suarez will be starting at one wide receiver. Jesse Nichols, Alejandro Perez. And Francisco Lopez expected to start for the Tigers. And along the line, Diego Valenzuela, or Valencia, I should say, Wolfgang Horner, Andres Castell in the center. And we'll have to check and see who the right guard is if Ethan Reeves is not playing tonight due to sickness. Okay, so it's uh, Jose Apodacas at center. Okay, you'll need to write those down because yeah. we've got some changes along the line Andres with Castell sickness is, this week. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll call it after this. Tiernan sets the, the team. From the shotgun, back to pass, rolls to his right, gets flushed out, going to come back to the left, tucks the ball, going to run, tries to turn the corner to the 20-yard line, get a big run out of bounds around the 25, they get the 26-yard line, good gain by Tiernan, and see if they're going to get to the 26 or 27-yard line. That was a good gain to start to this one out yeah. on a play that was going to be a pass to the right. It's going to be an eight-yard gain, stuck it down in two. Yeah, taking pushing out, push out of bounds by Dakota Toller. Number five, the linebacker. Yeah, number 25 open right behind the linebackers. All by himself. As I mentioned, Tiernan, 98 yards last week. Almost yeah. got the 100-yard mark in running. And like I said, he's, he is a runner back there. He has a good arm to throw, but he's a good runner back there. That shot stays in the lineup. He goes to the right side of Tiernan in the shotgun. Tiernan gets the snap. Hand it off to Shaw. Shaw will get the first down. We'll get hit at the 30-yard line, but we'll dive to the 34. It'll be a gain of six and a first down for the Tigers. Saturday, write them down after he made the first down. I love to watch uh, Wolfgang Horner. It's the pancake buck. Oh, he, he just takes this poor kid out. And it's 6'2 and 305. And you bet that hurts. 600 pounds, I heard. <laughs> exactly. He's a big He's kid. A big kid. Monster. And I told him, once you knock him down, don't pick him up. No, I know. <laughs> that make them pick themselves up. <laughs> Tell you a little story about that in just a second. Steph Shaw in the backfield. Tiernan sets up. Pump fakes. Pump fakes again. And have to be flushed out of the pocket. Looks downfield. Has a receiver. Going to complete at the 40-yard line. And down to the 44 is going to be Dominic Suarez. It'll be close to a first down, depending on where they mark it at. But it's going to be, yeah, they're going to call it a 10-yard gain and a first down for the Tigers at the 44-yard line. So one pass, one reception, and a first down for the Tigers. A lot of time to pass. Good job at that front line right. for the Tigers. And when you've got some new players not used to starting to, yeah. you know, pressing the service start. kind of at the last minute, and I'll get a shot up the middle. He's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll power his way for some yardage, and he'll get down to about the 48-yard line. So he gets gain of four yards on the play, second down to six. 15 and 37 in on the tackle. That'll be Logan Ramage. And Tyler Hayes, 10 yards and two carries for Shaw, has scored a touchdown at West Hills and a touchdown last week in okay. the victory over Cibola. His peripheral vision is just outstanding. Yeah. you got to see him in basketball, too. When you see just a little bit of a gap, and he seems He's to there. find those guys, and he nails there. it. Yep. 
stuck it down and six. Fake the handoff. Tiernan's going to carry it himself. Tiptoes through the 50-yard line. Going to be brought down in Jaguar territory at the 48. Be a gain of another four yards in the play. A third down and two coming up for the Tigers. Francisco Lucas and Corey Villalobos. Mind for the tackle. About 12 yards on a couple of carries for Tiernan. I don't think either one of them were designed to run. No. But he's got a, he's really has shown a lot of promise and a lot of poise in looking at the defense and making decisions the last couple of games. Yeah. And Coach, uh, I asked him, I just want you to work and learn one thing per week. Good. Improve on one thing every week. Third down and two for the Tigers, the Valley Center 48. And it off to Shaw. Shaw's going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. Boy, getting in there defensively for Valley Center, doing a great job on coming up through there was the, one of their captains, Tyler Hackett. And the Tigers are going to get stopped back at the 50-yard line, a loss of two. So fourth down and four from the 50-yard line. Yeah, he was battling the line, the right tackle, and still hit him in the back of yeah. And you look at him, and he's not a big kid. No. But, man, they just they come up with some strong athletes up at Valley Center in football. Fourth down and four, Tigers are going to go for it. Jernan in the shotgun formation. Naylor is in the lineup. To his right. Tiernan's going to roll out to his right. Oh, he's going to look down oh, field, stops. stops, and then tries to run it. He's not going to make it. He I thought he went to the sideline. He might have been I, able to do it, I but think, uh, he turned up, and it just didn't happen. Yeah, I think he outruns him if he goes to the outside. He ended up getting four yards or about three yards on the play, but it needed four, yeah. so that will be the turnover on downs for the Tigers, and Valley Center will have the ball first and ten for their first possession of the night and they will be at their own 47-yard line. Oh, he battled. It took three guys. He battled, yeah. It hit him three times, three different times. Brought him, brought him down. I short. think they kind of surprised him that somebody would have stayed put over there on the left defensive yeah. end position, and then it kind of flushed him out. So first and 10 for Valley Center. We'll check to see on who will be starting, and it looks like it's going to be who we kind of figure in his bender. The handoff is going to go up the middle. Going to get good yardage to spin away across the 50-yard line to the Tiger 48-yard line. Hold on. We have a penalty. Here, holding. We got a hold. Back down to the 43. Going to be a hold against Valley Center. So no wonder he got so far down the field. Oh, it is. We got the water coming down. Sprinkling. It is sprinkling. Yeah, sprinkling. sprinkling. Right. We're getting a little bit on the the window. So a little bit of a sprinkle that we have here. Or as one time we were at a car race in Belleville, Kansas. And uh, Randy Roberts from Colorado, where they see a lot of rain. If there was a little bit of a rain coming down, he says, this isn't rain, it's heavy dew. <laughs> I always remember that. It's a heavy dew. So this is a heavy dew right now. <laughs> so it'll be a holding call against Valley Center. They'll mark it from the point of the infraction, which would be right basically the line of scrimmage. It'll take it all the way back to the 37-yard line. And they'll have a first down now and 20. I'll let you know the changes on the offensive line. I forgot to give them to you okay. before we got started here. Because we're missing five players for for this game. So first and 20 for Valley Center. And back to pass is Bender. It's a little screen pass over the middle, and it's not going to get very far. As tackled immediately on the play. And Jake Dunkel is tackled immediately on the play. After a gain of a couple of yards in the play, it'll be a second down and 18. Nice read by 32. Pablo Moreno, he sat there and just watched it develop. Uncle is our leading receiver. Five catches, 172 yards before that one. That's his sixth. And off at the middle to send away. He's going to get a little bit of yards across the 40, down to about the 43. Give him a gain of four, but a third and 14 coming up. Looks like but Diego Valencia for the tackle for the Tigers. So third down and short 14 to go. So they're going to mark the ball with the 44-yard line. Yeah, so let's okay. mark it a, a third and 13 from the 43. 43. Back to pass as Bender sets up. Going to go long to the far side as a receiver. Going to catch it. He's going to be tackled at the 20-yard line. Defensive back getting beat on the far side and collecting it. That's tough. See who it is that caught the ball. Yeah. He's at the far end over there. Number seven. Kevin Garcia, right? Gets the catch on that. 
And it's a 20, let's see, 30, 36 yards on that play. I'll tell you what, that defensive back was right on a beautiful throw. Put it right yeah, on the right there. Never broke the stride. Got some wheels on. Got yep. to watch number seven. Yep. So a first and 10 from the Tiger 20. Valley Center with the ball and moving. And about sent away up the middle. Runs into a big pack of red jerseys. Going to be brought down. But he still will get down to about the 16-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be a second down and six. But a penalty flag down on the field. Is there? No. No. Guess or not. 78. Brought him down again. Diego Valencia with his second pack over the night. Now we should be good on the against the run. Uh, the pass is what I was worried about. And now uh, the coach tell me that seventy percent of the time, sixty five percent of the time they run to the right side. Bumble, 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 bumble on the play. Ball was still loose. Anyway, may have gotten to it, dove to her, but it, yes, he did come up with it. But they're going to lose it back to the nineteen yard line. So it'll be a loss of three, a third down and nine coming up. Third down and nine. Let there be light. I couldn't see, yeah, my, I couldn't see my notes anymore. Yeah. Get that way too. Third down and nine for Valley Center. And they're going to take the quarterback after that fumble and move him out to a wide receiver. Yes. Tiger. And bring in Colton Paxton, junior or wide, or no quarterback. He goes back to pass. That's a tall man. Passes deep into the end zone as a receiver, but the Tigers. Oh, I thought he had it. Oh, I thought he had it. Oh, oh, back defensively for the Tigers. Good job by Devin Mesa. Devin Mesa. The, uh, the receiver had to go into the defensive mode. Right, he did. He grabbed his arms to keep it from guessing it. You're right. Yeah, almost at that pick off. So we got four. Oh, they're going for a field goal. Well, the Jeremiah sent away their beach attempting the field goal. He had a 29-yarder against Brawley earlier this season. And this one will be set up. Be the 26th or 36 yards. Yeah. Oh, he and a Tigers jump offside. Somebody jumped over here too. We'll see if there was. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be offside. No, I, I'm not sure who they're gonna call this on. Maybe I thought I seen their right side yeah, of their line. Legal jump. procedure. Now it's gonna yeah. make it a 41 yarder. Now do you try it or not? <laughs> JJ, the coach wanted to know what they did. <laughs> so JJ gets on all, all threes and he tells you, center snap or center jump. That's JJ's character. JJ Jackson. JJ Jackson. Watched a lot of basketball with him oh, back in the day. He could play that Mac could play some ball. Yeah, he could shoot hoops. I tell you, he was a gunner and a half. High snap, ball down, kick up. Good leg on it. Wow. And it's going to be oh, no good wide right. to the right. Kind of looks like. Penalty flag right now. Late, and very late. Be a late hit. Very late flag. I mean, the flag was okay, very late. late flag. So we'll see. The kick was wide to the right, although there was plenty of leg in it, that's for sure. But penalty flags are right at where the kick was. It may be a roughing the kicker, perhaps. We'll see. And here's the call. Okay. Yep, roughing the that's kicker against the Tigers. Automatic first. No, I don't think so. I think it's a five-yard penalty, so it'll go back to being a 36-yarder. It's a little mistake that oh, you, so. you, you hate to see, but now he knows where to kick it, so yeah. <laughs> he'll know where his, uh, his target is a little better this time because that last one went wide to the right. Yeah. The penalty. a little bit of a breeze, huh? I see the trees just burning. Yeah, they are just playing a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, the flag. The flag. Yeah. It's a little stiffer. A breeze out of the west now. Fourth down and got nine, a timeout. Got and timeout. they're going to decide to go for it. They're going to probably need to put some time back on the clock. So we'll have that for just a moment. Keep the official time on the field, so they'll be See talking about that. There. I don't know what they're discussing. Oh, the clock? But with the fourth and nine coming up. One, one five zero, I think you said. One five zero. Five. Three. Three. Two. What? 
two minutes. Okay, so we'll put two minutes on the clock. Fourth and nine from the 19 yard line, and the Valley Center's lined up to go for it instead of going for the field goal. Kind of surprises me. Yeah, you know, still lined up. Because they were intending to go for a field goal when it was fourth and nine originally, and then a penalty took it back further. He barely missed, but he had a lot of leg in it, that's for sure. Oh, he had beautiful things. Yeah. He had more than enough. So fourth and nine, and Baxton will stay in at the quarterback position. He'll have Bender, who is starting out a quarterback, wide right. Have a flanker to the right and a receiver to the left. Then away will be lone in the backfield. And under center is Baxton. Baxton looking around. Looking at the defense now. Goes back to pass. Takes the hand out. Rolls oh. out. To the right side. Got to get caught from behind. Fumble by Kai Bishop for fumble. Jeremiah Nader picks it up and he's running. He's the 50-yard line. The 45 down to the 42 of Valley Center. And the Tigers are first at 10 at the Valley Center 42. Oh, this poor kid. And Jackson, who is the quarterback, is down on the field. He was tackled hard, but clean oh. by Kai Bishop. Kai Bishop. Wow, Got great it. job. He's an animal out there. He's an animal. This poor kid is hurting bad. Oh, I feel bad. He caught him from behind, brought him backwards. He's not moving that left ankle. So Paxton down on the field with time stopped, a minute and 48 remaining in the first quarter of play. It's the Tigers zero and the Jaguars zero. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 760-355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Start the day off right by having breakfast at the Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in Imperial Valley by you, our customer. Thank you. Now remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. We're back at... Uh Shimamoto Simpson Stadium, Imperial Paxton gets up and walks to the sideline on his own. At George, they were looking at his knee or ankle, which was his knee. He grabbed his ankle, and mm-hmm. it, right away he's grabbing for his wow. uh, left so knee. He goes off the field right. under his own power, but very gingerly, yeah, and kind of slams his helmet down on the table they have set up no, over was, on the far side. He line. was hurting from the beginning. Yeah, because he kept hitting the he ain't seeing that, but like I said, it was a clean tackle and a great play by Kai yeah. Bishop. So first and 10 Tigers from the Valley Center 41. Turn in a quarterback. And it off to Shaw over left tackle. Shaw will pick up some yardage to the 35-yard. I'm still in his feet to the 31. And a first down for the Tigers on a gain of 10 yards. Beautiful cut. Beautiful cut by Seth. Shaw went right up the middle, cut to his left. See nothing there. Kid straight to the right. Shuffling his feet the whole time. 18 yards and four carries for Seth so far in the ball game. He stays in the lineup to the right side of Tiernan. Tigers have three wide receivers going to the right side of the field, and now Shaw will break off and flank to the right. So Tiernan alone in the backfield. Ball on the left hash mark. Tigers going from right to left. Minute 14 to go. First quarter, no score. Tiernan over the oh. middle. The pass it has a wide a receiver wide open, and Seth Shaw, the ball just didn't get there. He threw it straight at his feet. Yeah. Straight at his feet. He stood straight up. He needs to set those feet up. So the incompletion to make it a second down and 10 now from the 31. Yeah, back to the fumble. When Jeremiah Naylor picked it up, it looked like he hyperextended his knee too. When he picked <laughs> it up, it looked like he was going down on his own. So second down and 10 for the Tigers from the Valley Center 31. Shaw will move back into the backfield with Tiernan. Tiernan goes back to pass. That's up over the middle. Going to decide to try to carry it. He'll get across the 30-yard line to about the 28, but then be brought down from behind. And the Tigers will have a third down and long coming up. That's a little slow there. He looks like he looked at one receiver, and that was it. Four carries, 18 yards for both Tiernan and Shaw. 
in the game so far for the Tigers. We have not seen Naylor yet, right? No. Okay. He's been in the backfield, but he hasn't seen carry the ball yet. He went to school with his great uncle. Yes. Yeah. Third down and seven for the Tigers. And out to Shaw, left tackle. Shaw will grind it out to near the 25-yard line. That's still going to be short of the first down, but at the 26, a gain of two. So a fourth down and five coming up for the Tigers. Bill Cotton makes the tackle. Fourth down and four. He's one of the, I think he's the safety, so that's good. He's getting that kind of penetration into the defensive backfield. And we have a timeout coming up. And oh, that'll quarter. be the end of the first quarter play with the score. Imperial Tigers zero and the Jaguars of Valley Center zero. We all love an expert. We've got a roof expert, a plumber, a great county. The list goes on. Imperial Valley Allstate agent Julie Oliver is your local insurance expert that knows the community. You'll get advice that you can trust to help you select coverage that's best for you. So whether it's protection for your car, home, boat, motorcycle, or more, Julie is here to help. Call your local Allstate agent Julie Oliver today at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Julie says, please stay safe and healthy. You are in good hands. Subject terms, conditions, and availability. Eight and Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's the place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, kegs, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a buck with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Eight and Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. Old Margaret said to tell you hi, and for those of you who know who Margaret is, it's my beautiful wife, Peggy. Everybody knows there's Peggy. I still call her by her Margaret. given name, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do, too, after yeah, I started. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. And then we also have Mike and Kim Devanovich from Conover, Wisconsin, listening in tonight. Oh, Conover. Okay. I, That's racist grandparents. I did a race near Conover a few years back. Take the hand off the Nader. Back to pass. Going to throw it over oh, the middle. Incomplete. It was intended for Zach Ray, but a ball incomplete inside the 20-yard line. The Tigers will have to turn the ball over on down. And uh, what looked like something setting up good after the fumble recovery by Jeremiah Naylor will turn up empty at the 31-yard line. And the center will take over first and 10 with 11.54 to go in the second quarter play. Yeah, we were lucky that one didn't get picked off. He threw a little bit behind him. Jake Dunk was there. So knock it down. So Valley Center with first and 10 from the Tiger 31. And Bender will have to go back at quarterback. And we'll go under center for Valley Center. You'll have two wide receivers to the left. And two running backs in the back. Bring a fullback in there and send it to the second back through Sinaway. Then we will break open a little bit across the 30-yard line. Out to about uh, 33, not 32-yard line. So the drive that started at the 26, and make a correction on that, start of the 26, is now to the 31, like a 32-yard line, so a gain of six. And off again to center, he breaks off a tackle, oh. and he's long gone. He's a 50-yard line. It's a foot race to the 40, to the Tiger 30, to the 20. Tries to get tripped up, is not. He'll go all the way for the touchdown. Big play, hurts the Tigers on from the 32, 18 yards, 68 yards on the play. Or the first yep. for the touchdown. 60. Yep, the right at 68. Yep. Oh, I thought we had, I thought uh, number 10 had him. Get your name right now. So sent away with the touchdown, and that is his sixth of the season. That's that Victor Valenzuela ran him down. They just missed him. Tripping him up. 82 yards carrying already in the game after that big 68-yarder. So his brother will come in to accept the extra point. Jeremiah, the extra point is good. So with 11-17 to go in the first half of play, it's now the Jaguars 7, the Tigers 0. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association 
is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960 If you're interested in helping out, go Tigers. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarate Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos. Yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great. The service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarate. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. So the Tigers trailing 7 nothing on a two-play drive that goes 72 yards, 68 of it on one run. By Lucas in a way. 7 nothing. Check off. We'll go deep. Back to the four. Shaw's going to bring it out. He'll trip up over the 20-yard line and get to the 21. And the Tigers will have the ball first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. You mentioned uh, J.J. Only. Jackson a while ago. And Lee Elder chimed in saying he was the best player IBC had while he was there. That he really pounded the dribble. And you remember that. Ooh, yeah, he you can hear him handle the ball. And he never stopped talking. That no, was just, exactly. But he, uh, I don't know if you remember, but he played at Pendleton. Right, that's exactly what he said. First and came to the Valley with a team from Camp Pendleton. He came in yep. two years in a row and scored over 40 points both years. Thanks for that, Lee. He was only 5'9", and he won the uh, dunk contest out there at 5'9". Oh, really? Yeah, he's a lot taller than that. He's probably like 6'6". Well, I tell you, when he, when he was on shooting, oh. anywhere on that half court was within a range for him. Yeah, he ended he up impressive. at uh, Alaska Anchorage. Yeah, Alaska Anchorage, that's right. Yeah. So the Tigers with the ball, trailing 7 nothing. First and 10 at their own 21-yard line. Get in the backfield, has Nader now to his left side from the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Back to pass. Oh. Goes out to the side, just a broken play. Uh -oh. The nearest receiver in the vicinity was Jesse Nichols, but yeah. thrown way behind him. Second down at 10. Now they're talking to Nichols, so I think he was supposed to stop right there. Little button hook on the out yeah, there. Yeah. On to the flat. He kept running straight. Turn in one for four in the game for 10 yards. That completion to Dominic Suarez to start out the game. He needs to get back on target. Second down and 10 from the 21. Glad the windows are shut because I'm seeing the smoke coming from across the side. <laughs> and I know hamburgers are being cooked. <laughs> <laughs> so second down and 10 from the 21 for the Tigers. Here he gets the snap. Hands it off Nader up the middle. Nader gets hit at the 23. Still keeps going. driving. Still going. As far as he gets was the 24. Four, they're going to call it. So a three-yard gain, a third down and seven coming up. That's a lot of work for two yards. There. It sure is. <laughs> that is a lot of work. For and he yards. went from defensive tackle last year to running back this year. He's a knock, though. So. Strong young man. You look back in, back in the lineup at him, yeah. and he just has the look of a, a good fullback in the backfield for the Tigers. He stays in there to the left side of Tiernan. A third down. And seven from the 24. Snap is back. Tiernan sets up out in the flat as a receiver. Got to complete it for the first down out around the 34-yard line. And it will be Jesse Nichols on the catch. He loses his helmet. So he'll have to set out of play. But it's a first down for the Tigers. Just over the defenders. Outstretched arms. I thought it was a pick there for a little bit. So two completions for... Kiernan, both for 10 yards. This one to Nichols. He's about to sit out one play because he lost the helmet yeah. as he went down onto the ground. And is that Bindio on the right side here? Number seven? Yeah, it looks like yep, it. That's who it is. Isn't it? That's yeah. Reese. Okay. Split out to the right. So first and 10 Tigers. Kiernan's direct going to carry it himself. He'll get across the 35-yard line. We'll get stood up. Still trying to drive, but he goes backwards. I'm not sure we're going to mark his forward progress. Let's see where the rest will put it. It looks like they're going to put it at about the 37. So a gain of three, a second down and seven coming up. A good battle between him and Dakota Toller and Francisco Luna. 
or Lucas, Francisco Lucas. So Nichols will come back into the lineup now, interested now to play. Second down and seven Tigers from their own 37. 909 to go in the first half. Trailing the Jaguars of Valley Center, seven to nothing. As we mentioned, the Jaguars five CIF championships under head coach Rob Gilster. And it off to Nader up the middle. He's going to be hit from behind and dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose the three yards back, and the Tigers now at third and ten, back at their own thirty-four. Oh yeah, that Jamal Solis had that red from the beginning. As soon as he handed the ball off to Nader, he was on him. Hold on, let me give you those changes. So at center, we have Jose Apodaca. Right guard, we have Andres Castellum. And right tackle was our center, Manuel Cardenas. Those were the offensive line changes we had to make this week. Third down and 10 from the Tiger 34-yard line. Taylor stays in the lineup to the left side of Tiernan, who's in the shotgun. Back to pass, rolling to his left is Tiernan. That's get rid of it. He's going to get rid of it. It's going to come up short. Kind of a scary pass oh, to throw where it was at. Nearest receiver is Alejandro Perez for the Tigers. But a fourth and ten will come up. The Tigers will punt. Oh, we're lucky that one didn't get picked up. Yeah. Yeah. And it went up for grabs. Yeah. I think you should have kept. I think you can outrun that outside linebacker. It's good. Or CJ so fast. I've seen him working on Seth Shaw. Well, so Jose Robles will be doing the kicking this week as Ethan Gonzalez Lopez came down sick. So Robles will be doing the punting and the kicking. Can't quite see who's deep to receive. No numbers on the j- shoulders. Robles left footed kicker. It's a pretty good punt off. Going to be caught at the 40 yard line by Dunkel. And Dunkel will get out to the 49 before getting hit and brought down at the Valley Center 49 yard line. We have a rough in the kicker over here. And the penalty flag. Looks like it was tipped, but it is going to be roughing the kicker against Valley Center. So the Tigers will get a break on that one on the roughing the kicker call against Robles. You seem to take a little bit of time in getting the kick off. Yeah. You know, and maybe so that's what threw Valley Center off a little bit. I'm not sure. Well, it's a slow, slow snap. It third, was very yeah, it was, right. yeah, he picked it up off the ground. So the penalty will be marched off, and it's a personal foul penalty against Valley Center. It'll take it to near midfield, and the Tigers will have the ball first and 10 on their own 49-yard line. Now we need to take advantage of this now. Ted Shaw, still not back. He's on the bench here, so. They were working on his legs earlier. Yeah, she, John's on the bench right now, so Nader is still in the lineup to the left side of Tiernan. He stays in the shotgun. Tiernan looks over the defense. Valley Center's defense moves around a lot, too. Low snap, fake the hand off to Nader. Tiernan's going to keep it himself. He'll get across the midfield stripe and get to the 49 of Valley Center for a gain of two. It'll be a second down and eight. Coda Toller and Phil Cotton combined for the tackle. For the Jaguars. Six carries, 23 yards for Tiernan, and a quarterback for Imperial. Second down and eight, 722 to go in the second quarter. Valley Center seven, Imperial zero. One long 68 yard run. That's probably the difference in the game right now. One play. Right. One play. Second and eight, Nader staying in the backfield. Shaw off the bench. Back to pass, Tiernan. Got a big pass. And to get close to the first down, I think he's got it. He's going to go to Alejandro Perez, and he'll get down to the 40-yard line. First and 10 Tigers on the gain of nine. Ali Perez, great hand. We had him in our 7-7 uh, seven seven passing league. Mm-hmm. And he was, him and Andrew Hendrick, they're just so hard to catch. They're fast. Andrew's so fast. And he did well last week. So they he expected did. him to get a lot sure more carry. Sure did. But he's not, he's not able to play this week. First and 10 Tigers, now Valley Center 40-yard line. Later to the right side of Tiernan, back to pass CJ. Going to fake it, going to run up the middle, going to get hit at the line of scrimmage. Will fight his way down to the 35-yard line after a gain of five, second down of five. 
this called Lucas finally brought him down. Now, CJ is a tough runner. Yes, he is. Tough, tough to bring down. Looking for Seth. Where is he? He's walking over to the right now. I oh, he's yeah, far yeah. right. So he's up walking around. Could see him back to line up hopefully shortly. Nader in the backfield, though. And both of them kind of go in and out. Jaron looks over the defense, taking his time. Gets the snap. Goes back to pass. Looks over the left side. Has a wide receiver right. open. Wide open. Catches the ball, but 25 to the 20. Dylan is beat to the 15-yard line. Going to be brought down at the 13. Was there a fumble at the yeah. end? He fumbled. Was there a fumble? But I think we got it back. Let's see. We have not seen a call yet. But I think the Tigers did retain it. Going to be to Perez again, wasn't it? Well, I thought it was five. But it was the five. Was the one that came yeah, five is, or was it 25? Might have been 25. Might have been 25 because it's a little taller, too. It's not a big quad. 25. Two five. Two five. So it'll go down the 13. Yard line, 22 yard gain, first and 10 for the Tigers. Dominic's fourth catch of the year, and the first one since the opening game. Did a good job of running afterwards no, as well. We got to hold on to it though. Make sure to game. hold on. Another baseball player we have. First and 10, and out Nader. Oh. Nader's hit as soon as he gets oh. the ball. Every time they're kind of keying on him, it, it yeah. looks like that as soon as he gets it, he just gets hammered. It is number four. It is number four. He's every time. Jamal Solis. Right? He's in the backfield. But most of the time, we do run to Horner side. So I'm sure they have that scouted already. Two-yard loss is second down and 12 from the 15. Nader will go to the right side of Tiernan this time as they're on the left hash mark. Yeah. He's already there. That guy's already Back there. Back to pass, it. And look ah. over the far side, gets tipped. Woo. Oh, almost intercepted. Very close to being intercepted by Valley Center's Jamal Solis. And it will be a third down and 12 for the Tigers at the 15. Yeah, it was tipped up, and uh, the defender was going to pick it up, and Dominic Suarez came back and hit it right. Good thing, too, a timeout on the field with 4.29 to go in the first half of play. It's the Jaguars 7, the Tigers 0. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarate Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos. Yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great. The service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarate. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 760-355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! The Tigers facing a third down and 12 from the 15-yard line, heading to the north side of the field here in Imperial. Empty backfield now with Tiernan. Rolls out to his right, looking downfield, getting a heavy rush. Looking downfield, downfield, stop. Throws it in the end zone, has a receiver open for a moment, falls incomplete. He saw Zach Ray, I think, and then Perez came over to it. And yeah. I, I don't know whether either one of them but was sure not to back with the other. Zach was under the goalpost. <laughs> and waving. He was wide open. He just kept rolling too far to the right. So the following complete fourth down and 12. And if we had Ethan for a field goal, I would say go for the field goal. But I'm not sure on Lola because I haven't seen him. So Jose's out there. Jose is out and there. And going to make the attempt. Ball will be placed at the 21-yard line or make it the 22. Ooh. So this would be a 32-yard field goal attempt. That's, that's what a kicker too. Try to get the Tigers on the board left. Put it kicker. Tiernan will do the hold. Get a good snap. Get him a good shot here. Good snap. Ball down. Ah. Kick is up, and it goes line drive. It's going to be caught in the air at the goal line and brought out to the 20. Bumble. And fumble. Fumble. The ball will go out of bounds. Valley down. Center will have the ball and will get out to 27-yard line or so. 
no good low kick. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler Hanks picked, picked up that short kick. One more. If he got from Stater, he's gone. Yeah. Do you remember a few years ago when uh, it was a college game? It was Auburn and Alabama, and I know that Lee will not want me to talk about it at all. <laughs> but a field goal attempt of like 52 yards to try to tie the game for Alabama, and Auburn player caught in the end zone, went sure, all, all the way. way and they won the end game. The end the Iron yeah. Bowl was won by Auburn that year. Sorry, Lee, but it just came yeah. to my head. <laughs> so the ball be at the 27-yard line of Valley Center. Oh, broken play. Broken play. Quarterback's going to keep it. And Bender will get out. Good yardage, actually. We'll get out to about the 35-yard line. Maybe the 36. We'll see where they place it at. And they're going to put it at the 36-yard line. So, gain of nine, a second down and one to go. Yeah, he looked to his right. And the running back was it there. But good job in keeping that and getting nine yards. Zach Ray finally brought him down. Right up the middle, Zach got him. Oh, no, that's not Zach. And this time the Tigers are going to stuff him for a loss. Back to the 33. It'll be a loss of three on the play. So third down and four coming up. Was that sent away the carry that time for the quarterback? Andres Castellum. Who was it the carry? Did you see it was the handoff or no? Yeah, it was handed off. Okay. It, it was off to him sent away for minus three. Andres Castellum. Got into the backfield. So it's a third down now, and about four from the 33. Bender makes the handoff, rolls out to his left. Looks downfield, got a pass, going to complete it for a first down at the 40-yard line. Dunkel will run out of bounds. Forced out at about the 47 or 48-yard line. Let's see where they're going to mark it at. They're going to mark it at the 48. It'll be a gain of 16 and a first down. That shot finally knocked him out of bounds. I also took out Coach Cruz. Vic Cruz took a tumble there. He seems to be okay. Fifty-four yards in passing as the handoff goes to spin away up the middle. He'll get across the fifty-yard line into Tiger territory to the forty-eight. So gain of four, second down at six. Seventy-three. Big to stand now. Either team with a huddle, so that goes quick. They're ready to go again. Under center is Bender. And I'll send away up the middle. Breaks some Tigers the line of scrimmage. To be brought down at the 45 of the Tigers after a three-yard gain. But a third and three coming up for Valley Center. He said he is not a very big player, but, man, does he ever run hard. He's hard yeah. to bring down. Yeah, Tiger will try. finally brought him down. About, what, three, four yards short. The first down marker. 92 yards, including that 60 yard, 68 yard touchdown run for Sinaway. It's a third down and three from the Tiger 45. Big Dan off rolling to his right as Bender. Bender has a lot of room to run. He makes a couple of moves to the line of scrimmage, then hit hard. He's going to be short. Not sure he came in on the tackle. They might give him that. Looks like it was Kai Bishop came in on the tackle, but where they're yeah. marking, he's going to be a little bit short. So give him a gain of a couple. And it'll be a fourth down and one at the 43. The Tiger just missed the tackle about the 45-yard line. But Kai made a great job of coming yeah. up and stopping that play. Oh, though. he's so quick. Yeah, he's so quick. We, I think we and have a timeout here. Timeout called by Valley Center with 109 to go in the first half. And it's the Jaguars 7, the Tigers 0. Start the day off right by having breakfast at the Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in Imperial Valley by you, our customer. Thank you. Now remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. Well, that was a 30-second timeout. That was quick. We didn't get that minute in there. I didn't get my training. They're going to give him the first down after all, so it's going to be a first and 10 at the 43. Taking their time. Back to pass Bender. Sets up. Going to look deep onto the near sideline. Way oh, over penalty. to the receiver. Penalty flags are going to go down. Back defending 
for the Tigers. I think he's going to be called for the pass interference. Devin Mesa. Is, yeah, Devin Mesa. And I don't really think it would have been, except the receiver put his hands up in the air like, oh, he's, he's all over me. And I don't think he really was, but it's going to be called. Now they're, hand, they're hand fighting there. When he threw his hands up, now it's a pass interference. So the pass interference call will go against the Tigers. This will give Valley Center first and 10. They're going to mark the ball down at the 27 yard line of the Tigers. First and 10. It's just too much time back there for the quarterback. New running back in for Valley Center, too. Looks like Corey 40. Villalobos is it? Number 40? Yeah, 40. Villalobos yeah. is in at running back now. Then away goes to the sideline. 5'7", Junior. No weight on him. Ender makes the hand. Oh. Rolls out to his left. Has some room to run. Tucks the ball. Going to be hit at the 30, at the 23-yard line, but will dive forward to about the 20, it looks like. A gain of seven, so second and three coming up. We're going to put the 21 yard line. So gain of six, the second and four. Tiger Ochoa brought him down. Uh, it looks like we have a timeout, Nick. We sure do. And timeout on the field. 41 seconds to go in the first half. Valley Center seven, Imperial zero. We all love an expert. We've got a roof expert, a plumber, a great mechanic. The list goes on. Imperial Valley Allstate agent Julie Oliver is your local insurance expert that knows the community. You'll get advice that you can trust to help you select coverage that's best for you. So whether it's protection for your car, home, boat, motorcycle, or more, Julie is here to help. Call your local Allstate agent Julie Oliver today at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Julie says, please stay safe and healthy. You are in good hands. Subject terms, conditions, and availability. Okay. Again, 30 seconds timeout again. We didn't get the full minute. Valley Center back onto the field. So the Tigers have to rush back out. Second down and four from the 21. Villalobos stays in the backfield. Bender still under center. Back to pass. That's up in the pocket. Oh, look out of the far end. He's got a receiver open. He's going to throw a dying quail, but it will be caught at the five yard line. Number two. It'll be Dunkel again with the catch. It's the first and goal for Valley Center at the five. 16 yarder. First and goal. And Alfia Blobos around the left side. He gets hit behind the line of scrimmage and brought down. No gain on the play. Zach Ray. Ice cover by the Tigers. Second down and goal. 16 seconds on the clock, and Good that will be well, we another timeout on the field with the Tigers we... trailing the Jaguars 7 and nothing with 16 seconds to go in the first half. Eight and Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's the place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, kegs, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a buck with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Eight and Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! And before the snap, penalty flag goes down. Malachi Takbian comes into the lineup in the backfield for Valley Center. And they're looking over the shoulder pads. Yeah, JJ's tell, told the running back to look toward the sideline. Uh, Via Lobo, so I'm not sure. Wow. Yeah, it's going to, there's something having to do with his uniform. I'm not sure whether he, maybe he didn't have his mouthpiece in. Or yeah, that could be. Yeah, that, that could have been be. the infraction. But that's going to really hurt Valley Center. It's going to move the ball back on that penalty. 
it'll still be second and goal, but they're going to bring the ball back to the 12-yard line. And we got Ryan and Lori Kemp listening in from Brawley. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. 18 seconds remaining in the first half. It's a second and goal from the 12 for Valley Center. Don't think they have any more timeouts left either. We've got to stop them right here. On a couple of plays, Bender under center, back to pass. That's up. Looks over in the corner of the end zone as a receiver. Jumps oh, up right and over. catches it. Right over the intended, or over the defending. Defender. Yep. And it's going to be caught by Kevin Garcia, and it will be for a touchdown, a 12-yarder, and it's 13-0 Valley Center. Oh, Victor Valenzuela was stretched out as far as he could go, too. That has to be a perfect pass. Just didn't have a height. Oh, he, you know, he probably wouldn't be about 5'7". And that is uh, Mike Valenzuela's nephew. Okay. Great nephew. So Senaway will nephew. be in for the extra point attempt. And the ball down. Kick is up. And it is good. With 12 seconds remaining... In this first half of play, it's now Valley Center 14, Imperial 0. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos. Yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great. The service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarape. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. Scoring drive for Valley Center. Can play 73 yards and use up almost four seconds off the or four minutes off the clock. Or actually, three minutes and eight seconds off the clock. And capped by the touchdown pass from Marlon Bender. To uh, Kevin Garcia, only five ten, but he sure got up in the air pretty well on that, didn't he? And it's a fourteen. Yeah. So we have uh, Ali Perez and Dominic Suarez at the back to receive the ball. Usually, Seth Shaw's back there, but he's still on the sideline. I don't know if it's a knee or a groin. He just kind of limping on the sideline a little bit. A little pooch kick. Tigers need to get up and get that. They're going to catch it at the 30-yard line. The 35 oh. breaking up to the 40, 45, to the 50-yard line. Still on his feet to the 40-yard line of Valley Center. Oh, then the ball pops open. The Tigers are going to recover it four with four seconds to go at the Valley Center 40-yard line. Tiger will come. Yeah, Tiger will come. Yeah. Ooh, Tigers will have a shot. They have one play, four seconds to do something. But they're at the Valley Center 40-yard line. Who, was, who received that kick? Was it 22? 22, yeah. Francisco Lopez. Francisco Lopez, okay. He was moving down that field. He sure was. Oh. Didn't hesitate when he caught it. As soon as that, the that short kick. 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 <laughs> that kick returned it back in. So went, where the uh, hell was 20, went 30 yards on the return. So first and 10 Tigers, they'll have one play, and they're going to bring in Reese Vendiola, freshman quarterback. Sure are. He'll be in the shotgun formation. Valley Center will have three receivers or defenders back at the 15-yard line to try to stop anything. Watch the gun, Watch the gun on this kid. Oh. And jumping outside. outside right over the football is Valley Center's number five. Ball player, yeah. Dakota Toller. Oh, no, number eight. That's number <laughs> yeah, eight. I think it's number eight. Lucas Staley. Oh, yeah, we saw around. Staley, right? We saw Staley play a few years ago. Up there oh, two of them. I think it was two brothers on the team couple of years ago. Timeout the Tigers. The timeout for the Tigers with four seconds to go in the first half. And it is for 14 in Imperial Zero. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarate Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos, yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great. The service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarape. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. 
Start the day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee. Next door to the Brickhouse Deli. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blend drinks, or cold drinks. Including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, the Brickhouse Deli with big, bold, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli. Serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. So one play for the Tigers. Four seconds to go in the half. Back to pass. Rolling to his right is Reese Vendiola. He's going to pass it. Going to complete it. And then throwing it back. It's going to be completed to, to Jesse Nichols, who then pitched it back. Oh, CJ. So we'll get it to CJ. Yeah, it's going to end up at the 23-yard line, but that will be the end of the first half. So counter is a 12-yard gain by the freshman quarterback. The old flea flicker. We the old that. flea flicker, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and we did it a few times. I haven't seen it in a while, but you're right. So, thought a few times. So one for one for Reese Vindiola. Yeah, he went three for three last week. Or two for two last week. So he's three for three on the season. Three for three. Yeah. So a halftime score here in Imperial at Valley Center, a division is two school with five DI championships themselves with a 14 to nothing lead over the Tigers. And uh, Tigers, have, although have played well, have played a couple of big plays at a 68 yarder to start their scoring, and then uh, just... Pretty pass over here in right, the court. Right, and getting up and just using a height advantage to make the difference on that. We'll recap the scoring and take a look at the stats as our halftime show continues in just a moment. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 760-355-1312. The Quarterback Club, which is the Imperial Tigers, a great season. Go Tigers! Start the day off right by having breakfast at the Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in Imperial Valley by you, our customer. Thank you. Now remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. We all love an expert. We've got a roof expert, a plumber, a great mechanic. The list goes on. Imperial Valley Allstate agent Julie Oliver is your local insurance expert that knows the community. You'll get advice that you can trust to help you select coverage that's best for you. So whether it's protection for your car, home, boat, motorcycle, or more, Julie is here to help. Call your local Allstate agent Julie Oliver today at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Julie says please stay safe and healthy. You are in good hands. Subject terms, conditions, and availability. Aiton Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's the place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice-cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, kegs, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a buck with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Aiton Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317. If you're interested in helping out, go Tigers. First half scoring here in Imperial Valley Center opened up their scoring with 11-17 to go in the first quarter of play. A 68-yard run. I think that was in the second quarter. Let me take a look at that first. It just seems a little long at that point. Yeah, it was in the second quarter. 11-17 to go in the second quarter of play. A 68-yard run by Lucas Sinaway. Capped a two-play 74-yard drive. Extra point by his brother made it 7 to nothing, And then they rounded out the scoring with 12 seconds to go in the second quarter on a 12-yard touchdown pass from Marlon Bender 
to Kevin Garcia on a 10-play 73-yard drive. Used three minutes and eight seconds off the clock. That's our score at this point at halftime. Just 14-0 to in favor of Valley Center. For the leaders, you know, I pointed out that their quarterbacks hadn't been that successful coming into the game. Marlon Bender, 24% coming into the game. He's 100% today. Five for, <laughs> five, five for five for 82 yards. Three of those were to their leading receiver, Jake Dunkel, for 34 yards. And the other two to... Kevin Garcia for 48 yards and a touchdown. And then Lucas Senaway leading ball carrier, 92 yards and seven carries, but 68 on that was play. on the one play. Yeah. Also, Marlon Bender, the quarterback, four carries for 12 yards. Corey Villalobos carried a once for minus two. So they have a total of 82 yards in the passing department. And rushing, uh, 92, 90, 102 rushing at halftime for a total of 130 yards. Oh. For Imperial. Not bad. Not bad. For Imperial, C.J. Tiernan has completed four of ten passes for 51 yards, and Reese Vendiola completed the one pass for 12. In those, you will have to make this two for 22. It's going to be uh, two catches. By Dominic Suarez for 32 yards, two that were uh, see two by uh, one, one by Nichols. Jesse Nichols has two nice. catches for 22, and then one catch for Alejandro Perez for nine yards, so 51 yards passing for the Tigers, and then rushing Tiernan with seven carries, 28 yards. Seth Shaw before getting the injury, five carries for 24 yards, and then a minus two for Jeremiah Nader on one carry. So the Tigers have 48 yards rushing, 63 passing for 111 versus their 130. Wow. Not a whole lot of difference. That's but that one big play, that 68 yards, made a huge difference. Yeah. And then the Tigers couldn't uh, capitalize on some turnovers. There was yeah. a fumble that was early in the game that the Tigers couldn't take uh, advantage of. Yeah. And have, the kicker, yeah. most of this play, the play has been on their side of the field. We just haven't been able to get it punched in. Missed a field goal uh, that came in the second quarter of 32 yards to try to get us on the board. So the Tigers trail 14 to nothing at the half. And, and this is what happened to us last year. So we did an excellent job on the, against the rush. And mm -hmm. one play. Yep. Long. One play. Yeah. One play would kill us. It, it seems like every game we had, we gave up that one long and you remember the last time we were up there, Imperial was leading 20 to 3 in the second quarter. Remember how upset yeah. their coach was? Oh, he was upset. And yeah, we gave and, it away. Uh, and had the lead going into the fourth quarter, and at the very end, lost it by three and had a long. We had that short kick on the right. kickoff instead right. of putting it all the way, putting yep. a lot of green between yeah, us and the. Coach. Yep. And so and it's a uh, little pooch kick. Yep. Don't know why. And, and that started its slide right there. Yep, that's, that's exactly right. That started the slide. But that was a game in which I thought we were going to – we had a shot of winning that one. Yeah. And the last time that they were down here at homecoming, we had the lead at the half. I think we had a 7 nothing lead at the half on that, and they scored 28 straight points in the second half on four turnovers of ours, took advantage of each of them, and we got beat in that ball game. So they've been close games and games that we've been in, even though we know that they're one of the best teams in San Diego County regardless of division. Um, no, they're solid. They, they always, I was just going to mention that is very well coached. Yeah. Very well coached. Yep. They're so sound on everything they do. And as we mentioned at the top of the program, they're not entirely that big, but they play fundamental and they're quick. Yeah. They move and get there quickly. So that's one of the things we've seen with Rod Gilster teams is that they're not necessarily big, but they're very quick and they play good fundamental football. They make you make mistakes and and then they try to capitalize on them like that. Kids. This year they don't have those big kids. Yeah. They're still doing the, what they need to do to get the job done. We're at halftime, and we're going to take a look at the scores of what's going on throughout the Valley during this halftime show. You're listening to KXO Radio, El Central California, 1230 on your AM dial. And we'll be back with more of our halftime show in just a moment. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos, 
Yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great, the service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarape. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 760-355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Imperial Valley College is welcoming students back on campus through the fall for an enhanced mix of in-person and online learning and student services. Enrollment is in full swing with classes already in session. Programs will feature an enhanced schedule of in-person labs and hands-on skills training with the option to continue taking a wide range of courses online. Students curious about degrees, available programs, and career paths can learn more by visiting imperial.edu and careered.org. with the Tigers trailing Valley Center, 14 to nothing here at the half, and uh, the elders back from walking the dog. Would it be nice to be out in the brisk walk of the dog? Yeah. With oh, yeah. 59 degrees? 59. That would be we, kind of we nice. We used to have my 50 today. All right, you want to expound on some scores? I'm going to go out and okay. talk to them for a minute. I don't Do we have a... Up as the scores now. Well, Calipat's not playing until tomorrow, three o'clock game in the afternoon. Uh, so we have in first quarter Raleigh over Cebola, 7 0. And that's got to be, there's got to be an update from that. And we don't have it right now. And the other one would have been Castle Park, oh, Vincent over Castle Park. 14 to 7 in the second. Excellent showing by the Vincent Memorial. And we got Jamie Platt listening in. Oh. Along with Mike and Jim from uh, Wisconsin. I'm sorry, Mike and Kim. I lost my notes here. Mike and Kim. Silvanovich. From Wisconsin, Conover, Wisconsin, listening in. Ryan and Lori Camp, listening in from Brawley. Ryan Ovindiola, listening in from work, he said earlier. And let me give you some of the defensive uh, stats that we have here for the Tigers. And uh, for the Tigers, we had uh, Kite Bishop leading the Tigers with three tackles, along with Zach Ray. Also with three tackles, Jeremiah Naylor with two, and he also picked up a loose fumble. And I think it was 23 yards he ran it back. Who else do we have here? We have uh, Andres Castello, Wolfgang Horner, Victor Sestania, and Tiger Ocha. With one tackle each for the Tigers, along with Joel Via Campos doing a great job with the Tigers. And then for the Jaguars, we have uh, Phil Cotton with three tackles from the outside linebacker position. Then next to him, we have Jamal Solis, Francisco Lucas, and Tiger Hayes. Each with two. We had one more right now. Oh, Logan Rabash and Corby and Logo. Yeah, Logos each with one tackle for the Jaguars. But they are, uh, we were doing a great job getting into the defensive backfield, and we had the, their safety and defensive backs making tackles, which is great for our offense. And then, uh, They've made the defensive changes needed and were able to stop the offense for the Tigers. So we'll be right back after this commercial break.
Imperial Tiger football is on the air tonight. The Imperial Tigers host the Cibola Raiders from Yuma. Mickey Dale and Dylan Nichols will have all of tonight's action coming up on KXORadio.com. Tiger football on KXORadio.com is brought to you by El Sorape Restaurant, the Imperial Tiger Football Association, 8 and Express, the Broken Yoke Cafe, Julie Oliver of Dickey Insurance Services, your Imperial Valley All-State agent, the Imperial Quarterback Club, Brickhouse Deli, and the Imperial Valley College. Let's go to the field for Imperial Tiger football on the web at kxoradio.com. With the opening kickoff, here's the voice of the Tigers, Mickey Dale. <laughs> Start the day off right by having breakfast at the Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in Imperial Valley by you, our customer. Thank you. Now remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. We all love an expert. We've got a roof expert, a plumber, a great mechanic. The list goes on. Imperial Valley Allstate agent Julie Oliver is your local insurance expert that knows the community. You'll get advice that you can trust to help you select coverage that's best for you. So whether it's protection for your car, home, boat, motorcycle, or more, Julie is here to help. Call your local Allstate agent Julie Oliver today at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Julie says, please stay safe and healthy. You are in good hands. Subject terms, conditions, and availability. Aiden Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's the place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice-cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, keg, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a buck with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Aiton Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. Imperial Valley College is welcoming students back on campus through the fall for an enhanced mix of in-person and online learning and student services. Enrollment is in full swing with classes already in session. Programs will feature an enhanced schedule of in-person labs and hands-on skilled training with the option to continue taking a wide range of courses online. Students curious about degrees, available programs, and career paths can learn more by visiting imperial.edu and careered.org. See Jamie Platt listening in. Hi, Jamie. Good to have you listening with us tonight. That's some interesting scores. Brawley leading to 14 nothing at the half. It's good to see. Actually, 21 now over Sebola, 21 nothing. And I thought that might be something that comparing, you know, because right. we saw Sebola last week, so you got a, a, a competitor yeah. Yeah. that's seen both teams. So Brawley leading 27 nothing in the second quarter in yeah. that one. The and Tigers it. beat Sebola 20 or 41 14 last week. Yeah, and this is another game here, and we can do this uh, for the right. same reason. Central over Vista, 28-14 up in Vista. So, we're just a minute away from the opening kickoff of this second half. The Tigers will be kicking off, going left to right on your dial here at KXO Radio, El Centro, California. 12.30 a.m. on your dial and on the World Wide Web. The Internet throughout the world at kxoradio.com. And let's see who's going to be kicking. It's not Robles who's going to be kicking no, here. Else. Okay. Quite see. Is it 20? see something. Yep. Yeah. Have to wait to the kick to see. Yeah. Dunkel will be back to, to receive on one side for Valley Center. Jamal Solis will be on the near side. Valley Center leading 14 nothing here at the half in Imperial. We'll be on the road next week at Monte Vista. Monte Vista. Yeah. Spring Valley next week. This is the Monarchs. It's been a while since we've been there. Huh? Yeah. Looks like 22 or 23. And we'll have to see what's he 
Yeah, it's two, two. Okay. It's going to be a short kick to the 25 yard line or the 15 yard line, but offsides. it looks like it might be an offsides against the Tigers. So Imperial will have to kick it again and doing the kickoff duties now, Francisco Lopez for Imperial. And now he's going to have to kick an extra five yards. Yeah. Okay, so still deep. Just staying back there. Several players for the Tigers injured or sick. One of the injuries that we see on crutches is Alex Zikashea. It's on crutches and they unable to play tonight. So the Tigers a little bit down on injury and sickness. Yes, especially on the offensive line. Right. That hurt us. Yeah, three of the five, isn't yeah. it? Reeves, uh, And a kickoff. Shields. Shields gets down to the 10-yard line. Dunkel will take it there to the 15 to the 20-yard line. Straight up the middle of the 25-30. Breaks through the 35-40 to the 45. Finally going to be brought down to the 45-yard line by the Tigers. Good return by Dunkel. And it's a first and 10 for Valley Center at that point. Yeah, Francisco Lopez, the kicker, that brought it down. Got to get him there. So Valley Center with the ball and the lead, 14-0. Marlon Bender, a quarterback. Five for five, 82 yards in this first half, including a touchdown pass. And I suspect we'll see him at quarterback the rest of the game. I don't think we'll see Paxton come back. He just looked really hobbly when he went off the field yeah, after no, that I, I, tackle in the first half. I really don't expect him back. Three wide receivers to the left side of the field for Valley Center. Then away will be the lone running back. Ender. Takes the handoff, going to keep it himself. We'll get to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. Jeremiah Nader comes up with a good tackle for no gain. Second down at 10. Yeah, when he turns back, you can hand the ball off to the running back. He's not nowhere to be found. So Bender with no gain on that one. His first carry of the second half. Java Nader is 16 put, too. Move over from the to the right side of the defense for the Tigers. Yeah, and I was going to mention, he was causing havoc in that backfield last week. And off on a delayed hand up to Sinaway around the left side, he'll be knocked down and brought down at the 48-yard line. So a gain of three, third down and seven coming up. Jovia Coelvia Campo. On the tackle for the Tigers. Yeah, this... Uh, this quarterback and the running back, they're off. It's not running smooth right now. So it's a third down and seven from the Valley Center 48-yard line. If the Tigers' defense could come up with a stop here and get the football back on this opening drive of the second half. Bender, under center, takes the handoff, rolls to his right. Mid First, they complete. Had a receiver open. Yeah. But just missed it to Cole Gearhart, and it will be a fourth down and seven, and they'll have to punt. Yeah, Cole Gearhart, all by himself. His first incomplete pass first tonight, incomplete. and he was open, too. Yeah. Just, I'm not sure if he just misfired. So Jeremiah said away will be in to punt. He counts his other players to make sure he has the full 11. And deep to receive, Seth Shaw's back out. Oh, he's back out. Oh, and deep to receive. Good. And who was their starting quarterback was with number well, 11? Bender was their starting quarterback then Paxton came in and got hurt. Okay. But Bender has been the starter. I hope that's not him still on the gurney over there. Yeah, I see one guy laying down on their bench over there. I'm thinking it might be. Good snap back. Ball's going to get away. Going to bounce. The Shaw will get away from it at the 25-yard line and stop to the 21. They could have let it go a little bit further, I think. I think so, yeah. But they didn't, and the Tigers will take the ball first and 10, and they'll be at their own. We're going to mark it at the 23-yard line. T.J. Tiernan, the quarterback for the Tigers. The Seth Shaw will come back in at running back. If not, it'll be Jeremiah Nader. Dominic Suarez has been one of the receivers, along with Jesse Nichols, Alejandro Perez, and Francisco Lopez. And again, along the line, you have Diego Valencia, Wolfgang Horner, and the other starters. Manuel week. Cardenas at right tackle, and Jose Apodaca at the center, and then Andres Castellum at right guard. And that's what it looks like it is. And Apodaca. later we'll start the second half 
at running back. I just seen Seth Shaw running on the sideline. I think he's okay. Well, if he was back to receive that, I would think that yeah. he would be okay. Take the handoff. Yep. Sharon is going to carry it himself and then pass it. It's going to be a backwards pass. It's actually a fumble pass, but it's going to be stopped after getting caught by Alejandro Perez. It'll be for no gain. In fact, maybe a loss maybe of a loss yard. Of It'll one, be a second yeah. and 11. That's kind of dangerous. No, they like should have just kept that. Trying to do too much. Oh, he picked up the ball and they're moving it to the other hash mark. I don't know why. <laughs> If the pass was here, why would they take it all the way to the other side? Maybe it was thrown backwards incomplete. That's what I'm thinking it is. Oh, yeah, Could they brought it back to pass. Yeah. yeah. They called the incomplete. So incomplete pass on that. So it'll be a second down and 10 from the 32. Well, we got Jesse Nichols, Ali Perez. I think it's 22. Yeah, the slot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Turn it back to oh, pass. Yeah. That's up. Looks downfield, going to throw it out incomplete. Had a receiver open for a moment, but not able to get it to him as Nichols. It'll be third down and 10. Good try by Jesse Nichols. Driving, driving back, try to catch that. Kind of throw a little behind him. Behind him. Yeah, that was yeah got to run back on it. That's tough when you're running full speed like that, yeah. trying to stop and shift your momentum. He's got 64 on the line. I'm trying to make sure that we have to. Correct line, then. yes. We're good. Then we got Wolfgang, Wolfgang Horner mm -hmm. yeah. on the other side, along with Diego Valencia. Right. So a third down and 10 for the Tigers. They're on 32-yard line. Take the hand out to Nader. Back to pass. Going to complete it to Nichols. Nichols is all oh. covered as soon as he caught the ball. It'll be a loss of the play. Back to the 20. Number nine. Good read by number nine. Say the Tigers were at the 22, and that puts them back to the 20. So a loss of a couple and a fourth down and 12 coming up from their own 22-yard line. He had that right all the way. Yeah, no, you wait there waiting for it. Malachi Tatian. He's got about a fourth and 13. So Jose Robles in to attempt the punt. Good snap back. Gets the punt off. Oh, good Pretty good one. Good kick. Dunkel's going to catch it over his shoulder at the 40-yard line. His momentum carries the 37. Now turns up field to the 50-yard line, upended at the Tiger 47. And that's where Valley Center will take over first and 10. They'll mark his forward progress at the 46-yard line of the Tigers. Little shoving match on the far sideline. Between the Tiger and the Jaguar. That was cute. So the Jaguars have a 14 nothing lead and the football. First and 10 at the Tiger 46-yard line. 9-10 to go in the third quarter. Live on KXO and on the internet tonight doing the simulcast. Mickey Dale along with George Grijalva. In the chain set up before Valley Center can snap it. Valley Center doesn't do a huddle. And I think Rob Gilster yeah. wants them to hurry up. And when the chains weren't set, he was a little missed about that. Be a pass over to the near side to Dunkel. He's going to catch it at the 50-yard line. Avoids one Tiger tackle, oh, but not going to avoid the others as they'll come in and crunch you for no gain. Second down and 10. Sylvia Campos was there as soon as he grabbed, caught the ball, but was able to lose him. And then uh, Naylor hit him. Campos came back to assist. He dropped by Joelvia Campos. So second down, that's a give him a loss of a yard on the play on that, actually. And put it back to the 47-yard line. So second down and 11 from the 47 of the Tigers. And it will hand it out to send away to the near side. Makes a couple of moves behind the line of scrimmage. Then puts the shoulders down near the Tiger 40-yard line. They get the 41. Looks like they're going to go to. So the gain is six. So a third down and about five to go. So the 100 yard mark for Sinaway. 101 yards now and nine carries. It's his third 100 yard game of the season. Third down and five. And I'll Sinaway on the right side. 
can make a couple of moves, puts his head down, shoulders down, powers his way to the first down. Inside the Tiger 35 to the 34, it'll be a gain of seven yards on a first down. How does he run so strong? Yeah, right up the field. He is not very big at all. No. They list him at 5'8", and that's what they put him in a stretching machine. <laughs> Probably weighs, what, a buck 50, maybe? Yeah, no, I don't most? think he weighs that. Maybe, I don't mean, how do you get that? And yet that seven-yard gain now puts him at 108 in oh. 10 carries, including a 68-yard touchdown run. First and 10 Valley Center at the Tiger 34. And it off again, sent away up oh. the middle. Runs into a red wall. Still going to get a yard out of it. You know, there was really nothing there. We're going to give him a, maybe a couple of yards in back. Second down and eight. Run the 32. Oh, here, I, oh. I, yeah. I couldn't spell that. And Diego, I didn't have him on the roster. on one roster. But that was... Oh. So second down and eight for Valley Center. And the ball at the Imperial 32-yard line. Bender, the quarterback, looks over the sidelines for Valley Center, takes a play under center, back to pass. That's up, looks over the middle, has a receiver, going to complete it to Garcia, gets the first down to the 19-yard line. The 19 for a 13-yard gain and a first down. Devin Messine on the tackle, but that's the left that you get the first down. Third catch of the night for Garcia, one including a touchdown of 12 yards. This is a 13-yarder. I'll tell you, that left tackle is doing a job on Naylor. Because Naylor is so fast and strong. Doing a great job. He's getting penetration, but not getting to the quarterback. And up up the middle to send away. Ooh. He'll get some yardage, bounces off defenders, and will get a good Gain down to about the 10 yard line. They get the nine. It's going to be very close to a first down. Let's see where they're going to mark it at. It'll be a gain of nine, so second and one from the 11. Yeah, Seth. He's just hard to play down. down. Seth hit him really hard is. right at, just after he crossed the, the line of scrimmage and went right by him. And I think it was Joel Via Campos. Second down in the yard. On the 11. And I'll send away again on the right side. Oh. Dances around, dances around, then tries to power his way. Not sure he's going to have it, but he may get the one yard they need it. See where they're going to mark the forward progress at. Pablo Moreno brought him down. Ty Bishop was there. He was reaching for him. He just couldn't reach far enough. Right. Say he no game. About a two-foot game. It'll count as a no game. Third down That's and a yard. As far as they don't come down to measure it, that was really close. That's probably less than a foot. Yeah. From the, the marker. Down, yes, less than a foot inside oh, the 10. And they, they must have heard you. They might bring it out. I I don't know. It just for here, it just yeah. looks like it's really close to go measure. Then they're going to go ahead and call the first down. First down. Okay, so they did call the first down. Kind of look like it from this angle. So it'll be at the nine yard line. And it's now first down and goal at the nine. Bring him blocking back in for Valley Center. Malachi tucked me in. And it all sent away around the right side. Follows this blocker. We'll get down inside the five to near the three before being brought down. Be a second down and goal from around the three. Gain of six. Pablo Moreno and Seth Shaw in on tackle for the Tigers. Oh, there's a penalty. There's the penalty. Late penalty, too. I just saw it. Yeah, yeah. You said it. Number 24, Seth Shaw. It is on the far side. Not sure what will be called there. We can't guess on this one, I don't think, even. Yeah. Maybe Jonathan can help us. I know. Out. Where's Jonathan? We need to guess <laughs> these things. You mentioned that last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is too cute. you got to tell the story for the radio listeners. Well, and I mentioned it to, to Dylan last Dylan. week that, that if you watch games and see where the flag is and kind of see the flow of the game, 
you can guess the flags about 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time. And so when Jonathan, my son, who used to do the games with me a few years back, was growing up, and we'd be watching a game on TV, generally the Chargers, and there'd be a penalty flag, and I'd say, yeah, hold, they're going to bring that back, you know. And he'd say, how did you see it? I said, well, did you see it? <laughs> of course, they would call it a hold. And he would look at me, and I said, well, it was right there. Did you, aren't you watching the same game as me? It teasing him, figuring, you know, I'm just kind of guessing at it. And then as he got older, it started dawning on him. <laughs> For a while, I was the smartest guy in football, according to my son. Really? <laughs> That's too cute. Uh, wow, he's coming. J.J. Jackson's coming over to talk to Coach Shaw. Meanwhile, Seth Shaw comes to the sideline, and Andrew Mitchell goes in to replace him in the defensive backfield. Also, we see, well, the Campos in there at a defensive back. Tiernan is also playing a defensive back. So the Tigers have had to use different players that we haven't seen in different positions yeah. tonight because of injury and sickness. I didn't see my grandson, Stephen, come back up. I was going to ask him what is going on with his brother. But I didn't ever see him yeah, come back up. I'm kind of curious because they did have him back for the kickoff. They had him in on defense and down to the sideline. So yeah. you kind so of wonder how serious it is. It, I, I don't looked like it was more of the groin. But mm -hmm. Man, they're coming fast from a groin pool. It's tough. So they're picking the penalty flag up now. Maybe it just fell out of his pocket. I don't I think I it must have be no penalty on the play. I don't think David would answer the call right now if I called him. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the head coach would pick up the call. <laughs> so it'll be a second down and goal, or first and goal at three. And the rest, the rest are still working this out. There's three refs together, still talking it out. Should be second and goal. They have first down on there. It should be second down because they had a first and goal at the nine in game six. There should be second and goal for three. But they have, there we go. Now they got a change over there. I guess they heard me again. Yeah, they heard you again. Yeah. <laughs> So second and go from the three-yard line now for Valley Center. Okay, and here we go. They're starting the clock. And I'll send away over the left side. Send away. He will get in. Touchdown. Big hole. Just followed his blockers and got in for a second touchdown of the night. And that is his seventh of the season. And it's now 20-0 to zero in favor of the Jaguars. They're just winning the battle up front. Yeah. That's about it, really. Good run, uh, right off tackle. Yep. Just right followed his blockers and right off tackle. Blocker. 129 yards now, 15 carries and two touchdowns for Lucas Senaway. Comes at the 402 mark of the third quarter. His brother Jeremiah comes in for the extra point. High snap. Not going to be able to get it. Tigers are going to cover all over him. Benier oh, will throw it off, but it almost gets completed. Almost but it will fall incomplete. 45. And the Tigers. Defense keeps them from getting that extra point. With 4.02 to go in the third quarter play, it is Valley Center 20, Imperial 0. Start the day off right with your favorite drink from Brick House Coffee. Next door to the Brick House Deli. Brick House Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blend drinks, or cold drinks. Including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, the Brick House Deli with big, bold, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at Felisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 760-355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! And that scoring drive for Valley Center, nine plays, 54 yards, using five minutes and eight seconds off the clock. And tapped by the three-yard touchdown run by Lucas Senaway, his second of the night. Extra point was no good, so it's a 20-0 to zero game. And the Tigers will get the kickoff at the 14-yard line, turning the court to the near side of the 30, and then driven out of bounds at the 31-yard line. 
Is it Dominic Suarez? Yeah, Suarez needs down, down on the sideline, and he has not gotten up. This is one of those kind of tried to make the stop and got wrenched around. Yeah. So he is on the sideline, and they will have an official's timeout while they check on his condition at the 31. Yeah, you and I would be in traction right oh, now. Oh, goodness, yeah. <laughs> we, we would be well, moving. that wouldn't run the first no, we, Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's, you're, you're expecting us to have run that far to get there first. <laughs> we One thing at a time. I don't think I can get that far. So <laughs> that's not going to happen. And Suarez is getting up, going to be helped by teammates over to the side. Yeah, no weight on that left foot. Yeah. Yeah. I hope he's okay. I hate seeing that. Good kid. This is Father Ray right in front of us. So first and 10 Tigers will be at their own 32-yard line to open. Well, we have Reese, drive. Reese Bendiolo in a quarterback for the Tigers. Reese Bendiolo trying to mix things up in a quarterback, freshman quarterback. So we're going to be throwing now. And fakes the handoff, throws over the there middle, going to complete it to Perez. Gets the first down, still on his feet to 45. The ball went around his back, it looked like, but he held on to it. To the Valley Center 48, the first down. I've never seen him on the basketball court, but he might wow. be. Wow, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> oh, he, he did good to keep that. I thought he was going to fumble it. He got hit as soon as he... Uh, it's going to be for 20 game. yards on that one. Longest pass, Reese Vendiola's varsity history. Four for four so far. And off to Nader. Nader will get across the 50-yard line still to the 45, on. still on his feet. He'll get to the 44 of Valley Center to gain of four, second down and six. Hard to bring down. Yeah. Now he's back. Well, Luke Staley in on that tackle. He lost his helmet, so I think he went to the side. Yeah, he's on the side. Line. And 30 for the Jaguars. I got to give him that because he was running over, and he didn't give up. So Tiger coach David Shaw trying the freshman quarterback thing is just a different quarterback in there can make things happen. And so far, the Tigers have moved into Valley Center's territory and back to pass Vendiola. Looks to the near side to pass it. Incomplete. Broken up. And good thing that uh, Tiger was there as Val Katakbian was there. And Francisco Lopez, as you mentioned earlier, going on the defense. He went to the defense. That, right. Had to go into defensive mode to make sure that wasn't intercepted. Yeah, I think he overthrew Ollie Perez. I think that was intended for Ollie. His first incomplete pass of the night and the season, for that matter, for the freshman quarterback. Oh, CJ Kiernan back in. No, he's still out. Oh, he's he went back out. CJ's yeah. on the far side. Yep, and he was a receiver last year. Oh, he was, year. okay. So, right, he's on the receiver on the left side. So, we got Trish to the right. Right. And Kiernan to the left. They are in the backfield. Back to pass it. Is Vendiola passes it. Got to complete it to Perez to the 38 yard line. And it looks like it's good enough for a first down. Trying to get extra yardage and went back a yard, but I still think he has enough to get the first down. It is first and 10 for the Tigers. Good pass. This one will go for six yards. Just enough for the first. First down. 38 yards on three of four passes for Vendiola. So he has out here by himself. Let's see how right. he matures as a freshman quarterback oh. on the varsity squad. Let's see how he matures. Yeah, up at uh, Westfields. Mm -hmm. Roll to his right. 45 yard pass against his body. Back on to the pass. Quick one. Throw oh, the right side right. intercepted. Do a right to the defender who We're caught the pass it. and then brought it out. And it's going to be through Logan Rama. Oh, Stops the Tiger possession at the 38, and it'll be first and 10 Valley Center on the return to their own 42-yard line. That's almost like that was a timing pattern there. Yeah. And that got cut right in front. Take that off. Good play by the defender, Ramage. Logan Ramage. Got a pretty arm, though. I got to give him that. He's just got a pretty he did a good job of, of watching the quarterback, though, as the defender yeah. watching the quarterback and just going right where the ball was at. He picked it off. So first and 10 for Valley Center. Throw 42. Back to pass is Bender. 
sets up. Mass time, throws a deep, arcing pass to Lopez or to Garcia, and he just uses his body like a defender in basketball to get the rebound and the catch at the 22-yard line, first and 10 for the Jaguars. That was a good screen. The way he screened up yep, the defender. Exactly what he did. Pretty. Yep. Devin Mess, I finally brought him down. He was there. Damon was there. He just, just like a basketball defensive. Yep. Here we go. And out to send away up the middle. Zigzags his way to about the 18 yard line. And a gain of eight, of five. That'll be a second down of five. Jeremiah. Naylor and Pablo Moreno by, for that tackle there. Yeah. The Tigers. Let's see. 2735. Yeah, the name we hadn't heard today was uh, Wolfgang Horner. Empty backfield. Bender's going to run out to the right. Got heavy pressure. Going to throw it out to the side. Diving incomplete at the 20 or the 15 yard line. And it will be a third down and five at the 18. He did a great job of getting away from the defenders coming in and getting rid of the ball so he didn't lose any yardage. Good job, at quarterback. Arlen Bender. Done a pretty good job tonight. This has been his best, best passing game of the year. Arlen, about six. Yeah, Arlen Bender. Sent away in the backfield. Bender gets the snap, going to run it himself up the middle. Tigers, of course, a fumble, fumble. and the Tigers it. are going to recover it. Who came up with that one? I think you'll say that. We're going to look down at the bottom of the lineup here, getting at the bottom. Oh, no, Kai Bishop. Kai Bishop. Kai Bishop comes up with a fumble recovery, and the Tigers' defense holds and will take over possession of the football at the 16-yard line. Yeah, I don't know who forced the fumble, but... Kai ended up on the bottom of that pile. Came up with the ball. Good stop by the Tigers. Maybe we'll get some momentum going. Just lost some field position and some time. 38 seconds to go here in the third quarter play. It's Valley Center 20, Imperial 0. Good drop by the Tigers. And Kai Bishop from all over the place. He's just... Uh, he, he's like Ethan Ramos from last year. Yeah. He, he's just all he's got good instincts on uh, defense. His grandfather, John Bishop, yep. longtime coach of Brawley. I think you learned a few things from Grandpa. <laughs> <I think. laughs> that's what I keep telling Seth on the, when he said safety. That's what he anticipates so well. Yeah. And he just it's a, it's so a smart big, back there. Big part of the playing defense. That's well, for he sure. Went, uh, I'll tell you a story right now. Back to pass, Vindiola going to complete the pass. And getting a little bit of yard is not a whole lot. It'll go to Jesse Nichols. And it'll go to the 19-yard line, so a gain of four, second down and six. Right on the money. Beautiful pass. Right spiral on the line. Both teams with no huddle offense as they get things done quick, and I'm not sure where they're going to get another playoff before the end of the quarter. This is down to 10 seconds and running. Six, five, and they will not get another playoff. That'll be the end of the third quarter play. With the score, Valley Center 20 and Imperial 0. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 760-355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Start the day off right by having breakfast at the Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in Imperial Valley by you, our customer. Thank you. Now remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. So we start the fourth quarter play. 
with the Tigers of the football, second down and six from their own 19-yard line, trailing Valley Center of North San Diego County by a score of 20 to nothing. Four. Tigers ravaged by injury and sickness this week. Yeah. And have a lot of different players in there yeah. playing different and positions. This just happened Wednesday. And a, it yeah. happened Wednesday. Yeah. And, yeah. Wednesday's when we've gone down. and of all times, when you come out against a good team like Valley Center. This would be a good game with our offense. Oh, yeah. If we had everybody in tech, this would be a really good game. But, but they know we're going to call the horn or something. Yeah. That's where they're going. Second down and six for the 19th. Rolling out to his left is Vindiola. Looks downfield. Looks what downfield. Not going to pass it. Goes it up pretty much for grabs, though. And he's going to be caught, though, at midfield. Now the penalty flag is down. He's going for the football, so I can't believe this is going to go against Imperial. But it's caught by Alejandro Perez. A great job of looking for the football, coming back and getting it. He looked back, and he came back right between the two defenders. They were still running south. And it's going to go against Valley Center, pass interference. 31 yards on that one, first and 10 for the Tigers. Right at the 50-yard line. Good job. Good pass by Reese Vindiola. And excellent job by Ollie coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Vindiola, quarterback, hands it off to Nader up the middle, puts the shoulders down, will dive to the 37-yard line in Valley Center territory, a gain of three, second down and seven. This good Lucas finally brought him down. You hear that little pop? Okay. <laughs> granddaughter's right here. Oh, and her brother. So second down and seven. Tigers at the Valley Center 47. Back to pass. Vendiola rolls out to his right. Stop on the play. Penalty flag. Against the Tigers. It's going to go against the Tigers. Yeah. Legal procedure put it back on the Tigers' side of the football field. I didn't see anybody jump. There hasn't been that many penalties. Tonight, no, it though. really hasn't. It really hasn't. Ball, I'll put it back to the Tiger 48-yard line on the five-yard illegal procedure penalty. Well, Ali Perez, Tiernan, and... I can't see the other one over there. Oh, Jesse Nichols. Split to the right. All right, trips right, one left. Nader in the backfield with Vendiola. You know, with you know what? I think yeah. this is Dominic Suarez over here on that side. So that's good to see that he's back. Or is that 22? No, it's not 22. He's on the sideline. Oh, it is Dominic. And out to Nader. Nader is going to get some running room. He'll get down back across the midfield stripe to the 46 of Valley Center. Third down coming up for the Tigers. I like the that way. That time he put his that time he put his shoulders down. And because usually he runs straight up, and he put his shoulders down and tried to run over that. Not a six yard gain on that one. So third down now. And a long six from the Valley Center 46-yard line. Final quarter play here in Imperial. Valley Center leading Imperial 20-0. to zero. Rendiola gets the snap, rolls out to his right, looks downfield, downfield, then throws it into the middle, a lot of white jersey. It'll go incomplete. Tiernan was closest to it for the Tigers. That'll be a fourth down and six. I think Tiernan touched that. He was able to touch that. And the Valley Center player is down. Oh, crap. Not sure who the player is that is down, but we will check on his condition. And with 9.47 to go in the ballgame, it's Valley Center 20 and Imperial 0. We all love an expert. We've got a roof expert, a plumber, a great mechanic. The list goes on. Imperial Valley Allstate agent Julie Oliver is your local insurance expert that knows the community. You'll get advice that you can trust to help you select coverage that's best for you. So whether it's protection for your car, home, boat, motorcycle, or more, Julie is here to help. Call your local Allstate agent Julie Oliver today at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Julie says please stay safe and healthy. You are in good hands. Subject terms, conditions, and availability. Aiden Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's the place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice-cold beer. 
And if you're throwing a party, kegs, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a buck with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Aiton Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. Vindiola backer will air it out and intercept it at the 10-yard line. Coming up with the loose change for Valley Center will be Miguel Fuentes at the 10-yard line. And Valley Center on the 4th and 6th to be as yeah, in a gift. We'll the uh, being answer is as good as a punt. It's going to get down to the 10-yard line anyway. Yeah, I think that was intended for uh, Dominic Suarez, and, uh, but it was short. And what was it? Ollie. Ollie Perez came in underneath and almost made the reception. Second interception thrown by Indiola tonight. But like I said, on that one, it was either punt it and, yeah. and maybe get a return or throw one deep and maybe get a catch out of it. If not, the Valley Center will get the ball first and 10. They'll be at their own nine yard line they're putting it uh, it's probably better than the punt I yeah oh yeah no, i agree might as well go for it you know so first and ten for valley center way back on their own nine and it just sent away over the left tackle he'll stretch it out turns up forward then he gets pretty good yardage penalty flag will go down may Amazing. see a hold perhaps on this one a valley center player getting up slowly at the ten yard line but he does get up and we'll see what the call is on that. Yeah, it was, in fact, so it is against them. It's holding against them. Okay. Yep, holding against the offense. We got it right again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. Yeah, I know, I know. No. And one of those John, Jonathan said, and there's a... <laughs> Bert Hoffman has us some scores we'll get to you in just a moment. Updated scores of teams playing throughout the Valley. I want to remind you again that Southwest will be playing Copa at home in Del Centro tomorrow night. And that game will be live here on KXO, 1230 AM, El Central California. On at 645 tomorrow night, Carol Buckley and John Driffle. So there will be no gain on the play. And actually a loss of a couple because of the holding call. So it will be a first down and 12 back at the seven. And it's been away on the right side. Then he finds a little bit of a gap. We'll get across the 10-yard line out to about the 12. Give him a gain of five. But a second down now and about seven to go for first down. I'll try to get a number of the Tiger that made that stop. I think it's Tiger Ochoa. It is Tiger. So a second down and a long seven from the 12. For Valley Center, 8:36 remaining in the game. The Jaguars leading the Tigers 20 to zero. The Tigers is one of the players that we had when David Anthony, David Sean, and I had a. Mm -hmm. I think we drafted a bunch of ten-year-olds our last year, and he's this is our he's one of them. Yeah. very good. Tiger fake the handoffs back to pass, incomplete, and that was a dangerous pass when you think about it because there's a lot of Tigers around there. It was intended for Malachi Takbian, but it will fall incomplete. And now a third down and seven at the 12. Man, when you're back at the 12-yard line, that That's little dangerous. flat pattern pass is scary. Yeah, we had Tiger Ochoa and Joel Campos both there. <clears throat> they both had an opportunity to pick that off. So third down and a long seven from the 12 for Valley Center. Nearly eight yards to go for the first down. See, the Tigers can come up with a big stop right now and force the punt, get good field position. Try to get something on the board. we got to do it now. Back to pass Bender. It's going to be a draw play. Hand off to send away up the middle. They're going to stop him short of the first oh, down. Fumble. And a fumble. The Tigers are going to recover. I believe the Tigers may have come up with that. The point is like we did. We're going to put the glasses on it. Yeah, that's great. Yes. About that. Tigers come up. Okay. Tiger, it's a Tiger Ochoa kid coming in. If you talk about him, he starts playing the ball. And the Tigers have the football after the fumble. First and 10, and they will be at the Valley Center 17-yard line. Yeah, we got to do something right now. Yep, this is the time. We got to get rid of that two-seater. 
We've got the field position. Now it's time to do it. The 18 yard line, first and 10, 8.05 to go in the ball game. Rare miscue by Sinaway. He's been pretty sure handed that that one has got away from him. First and 10, Tigers, the 18. And he'll look, staying in at quarterback. Hand it out to Nader on the left side. Nader tries to turn the corner, but a good job of coming up and making the stop by Valley Center. And it's uh, Tyler Hackett again. We'll come up with the tackle. It'll be for just a yard, but boy, if he doesn't get the, the foot steps on that one, it was going to be a long gainer, yeah. Oh, we got a timeout. And a timeout on the field. 7.42 to go in the ballgame. It's the Jaguars 20, the Tigers 0. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317. If you're interested in helping out, go Tigers. And we got some updated scores, and I get corrected on the ball game tomorrow night. Kirk Hoffman reminds me that Jared Antondo and John Dripple will be calling the game tomorrow night, the Southwest and Kofa game at El Centro. Sorry, right, Carol's out of good town. I'm not going to be there on that one. Okay. And we'll get those other scores for you in just a moment, so I want to correct that. that Joseph Antondo will be calling the game along with John Dripple. Yeah, I'm not getting those updates. So second down and nine for the Tigers from the Valley Center 17. Bring Zach Ray back in for a blocking back. Back to pass as Vindiola sets up. Looks over the middle. Has a receiver going to complete it. And tackles just after getting the catch. Dominic Suarez. He'll be at about the eight-yard line, it looks like. It'll be a gain of nine. Close to a first down. Give him a gain of eight. And it will be a third down and one. Yep, one. From about the eight. Jake Dunkel made that stop for a first touchdown. Good job, Good job on the little pass over the middle like yeah. that. He gets rid of it quick. That's what I'd like. Over 100 yards passing tonight for Vindiola. And out Nader up the middle. Jeremiah yeah. puts his shoulders down. It's yeah. towards the goal line. Touchdown, yeah. Tigers. Woo. Jeremiah Nader with his first touchdown. As a running back with the Tigers, and they're on the board with seven minutes to go. It's 20 to 7. I like the way he's putting his shoulders down now. He got the first two games, he's running straight up. Running down downhill. Downhill. Yep. yep. I'd, I'd, hate to try to, I'd hate to try to stop him. That's for sure. I, I predict that's going to be. He's a big boy. I predict that's going to be the first of many for that young man this year. I sure would like to see it. Angie Thames. Angie Thames. Grandmother, grandmother, yeah, grandmother of Jeremiah. And the extra point is up, and it's got good. It. With seven minutes to go, the Tigers get on the board. It's Valley Center 20, Imperial 7. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarate Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos. Yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great. The service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarape. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. On a scoring drive for the Tigers, three plays, 18 yards. Touchdown, an eight-yard run by Jeremiah Naylor. Uh, this comes after Tiger Ochoa's fumble recovery. Yeah. Yeah. That was that, big. We've got to cancel that on the right We have to. Yep. And so with that, the Tigers now trail 20 to 7. And that's this is something we didn't do at West, too. Remember, we had those two fumble recoveries? Right. And should have put them both in. We only got one out of the two. Francisco Lopez kicking off for the Tigers. Good 
Good to see Dominic. They might have come back after the Valley Sanders Sanders off the field. an onside kick right now. Oh, they sure. yeah, they've got nine players up close. Instead, oh, it's going to be kicked deep. Knuckles is going to go back and get it at the 14. Going straight up the field. It's actually sent away, and he'll get across the 30-yard line to the 34. And it's first and 10 Valley Center from their own 34-yard line with 6.54 to go in the ball game. I'm glad we answered. I'm glad we answered like that. Yes. Yeah, I think it was imperative that we got on the scoreboard. We yeah. can't let the game go without getting on the scoreboard. And so avoiding the shutout, capitalizing after turnover, another yep. good thing. I like to see that with the Tigers. And uh, Kiernan has been is such a good runner oh, after yeah. getting the ball that yeah. – we may see more of Ben Diola at quarterback and have Kiernan as a wide I receiver, love maybe a jet sweep with him. There we go. That'd yeah, be nice. Yeah. And the other thing I was telling, uh, oh, well, he's not here, Hendrick. Mm -hmm. Talking to Coach Charlotte the other day, I told him, send him out by himself and put him in motion off to one of the flats mm -hmm. by himself, one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. Send away with the hand of Nader almost got him for a big Ooh. loss and just missed. But send away will get a couple of yards on the play. and It'll be a second down. And eight from the 37. Trying to get a number on the, the ninth, down. 19th carry of the game for sent away for 141 yards and a pair of touchdowns. And like we said, they, they put him at 5'8. I, I unless they put him on the rack, he's not 5'8. And he's not, I bet he doesn't weigh 150 pounds. He's just not a very no. big kid, but he's hard to bring down. He runs really hard. Go it they would say that was with a pig under each arm. Yeah, exactly. he doesn't wait up right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're right. And I'll send away left side this time. It'll get stacked Good up job. at the line of scrimmage. He'll still get a yard out of it. But a third down now and seven coming up from the thirty eight yard line. Yeah, Zach Ray on the tackle along with Taylor and Via Campos. Good job by the Tiger. Linebackers. Central leading Vista at last report in the third quarter, 28 to 14. Raleigh leading Sebova now 42 to 8 in the third quarter. Ooh. It's Oldville 42, Maranatha Christian 10 in that ball game for the fourth quarter. And Vista Memorial leads Castle Park 33 13 really? in the fourth quarter. Thank, Thank you, Kurt, for getting those for us. Picking a handoff rolling to his left is Bender. Bender will get hit by at the line of scrimmage, then get brought down at the 42 yard line, but a fourth down coming up. Will they go for it or will they try for it? On their side of the field, the fourth and two from the 47. Or make the 42-yard line. Philip Castro. Philip Castro. First tackle that I have with, uh, with the Tigers. 5'9", junior. And wise for them to punt the ball. And as we look at the punter, look at the crescent moon. Right oh, above yes. it. Isn't that great? Crazy. That is nice. And yes, Kyla, the Remember going to the Fox and the Crest? You mentioned it earlier that you remember going there. That's what our sky looked like tonight. It's beautiful. And then the different colors as the sun started to set. High snap. But the Bud's, Bud's going to get out. There was no rush at all. Like that bike, they thought about running it. Tigers will get it and get hammered down hard. Is Tiernan at the 27-yard line make it to 28. And that's where the Tigers have the ball. First and 10 at their own 28-yard line with 425 to go in the ball game and trailing 20 to 7. Kevin Garcia got him with his first tackle. Brought Kieran yeah. down. So I thought running? for a moment their punter was thinking about running. But Jeremiah Finaway got the ball and there was no Nobody rush at all. I and, uh, man, I was thinking he was thinking running this way and he might have got the first down. There's a lot of runner room this side. Thankfully for us, he wanted it. I just seen Seth has no shoulder pads on here. That's mm. all. Uh, okay, so we'll need to find out this week yeah. what his condition will be like for next week to go to Monta Vista. We'll be on the air on the internet at kxoradio.com, 645 next Friday night from Spring Valley. And off of the middle to Nader. Nader makes a couple of moves, then gets hit at the 30-yard line and brought down to the 31. That's his. That's him. Well, he got about three yards. About to thirty-one to give him a gain of three. Second down and seven. <sighs> Back 
the pass. Vidiola looks over the middle, has a receiver. Oh, oh. in and out of the hands of the intended right receiver, there. Rondo Perez. Had the catch at the 47 and just went through his hands. The best part of that, that ball was in the air before he made his cut back inside. Oh, it was and great it was, it was perfect. Yeah. It was perfect. And it ate him up. I don't know whether he was thinking about running after he caught it or what, but it right through his hands. Beautiful. Right on the line. Third down and seven from the 31 for the Tigers. Stopping the clock at 3.56 to go. That Valley was, Center up 20 to 7. Oh, those are hurt. Like on that. the money right there. That Might have been up at the 47 yard line. First down. Instead of the third. Rolling out to his left, Indiola. Gets a lot of rush. Oh. A lot of rush. Going to be sacked back at the 20 yard line. A gain of, or a loss of 11. The Tigers are going to have a fourth and 18 from the 20. Just the play before this one, he had all kinds of time to throw. And this, on this play, he had three guys right, chasing him. And nothing. Yep. And he thought about throwing that, getting rid of that left handed. He did. Yep. I know. He's, I noticed that. He, 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 he thought about trying to. But the Tigers are going to have to punt deep yeah. in their own territory at the 20-yard line. He transferred that ball to his left hand. He got, but he has to throw it at somebody, so it would have been tough. To, he had nobody around him. That's a breakdown on the, by the front line yep. for the Tigers. Yep. So Robles will be back on the punt. It looks like they're going to let it roll. And try to rush him because Dunkel is only at oh, yeah. the 38-yard line. Good snap. He's going to get the punt off. And, yep, it's going to go and roll. Let's see. It's going to take a good imperial bounce. Oh. Bentley flag goes down. That may go against Valley Center. As Dunkel went up to tackle the Tiger as he was coming up the field. That was, that was dirty. Yeah, that, that, that was dirty. Good. Well, then we had and then, and then they he's over here. It's tackling an imperial kid out of bounds. And there was a penalty flag over here for that, too. Oh. Tackled an imperial kid out of bounds. About 20 yards away from the football, there's no reason for that at all. So there may be two penalties on this one against Valley Center. But they will still retain possession of the ball because the, the ball had been punted. But, yeah, I don't like seeing that. No, I, I can imagine their coaches would be all over for doing it. And then celebrating after doing that. Yeah, yeah. So the referees in the middle of the field discussing the situation of this. Central now leading Vista 28-21 in the fourth quarter. So that game is starting to tighten up. They're still talking it over here. So. Final score, Oldville 42, Maranatha Christian 10. Ooh. The Vikings are undefeated at 4-0 this season. And final score, Brawley 49, Cibola 8. Or actually, that's in the third quarter. 49-30, 49-8. Favor Brawley over Cibola. Now, the market is off. They'll go against Valley Center. It'll be on sportsmanlike conduct penalties, I'm sure. There's just no reason for that at all. You just hate seeing yeah. that. Well, that's two then. So they're gonna, they marked one off, and now they're going to do another one? Got a hold? Yeah, the second one's going to be a hole. So after that, it's going to bring the ball all the way back to the 38-yard line of Valley Center. Wow. What was that sportsman like for Imperial? I didn't see I, that I didn't at all. Because yeah. right, the only one I've seen is over here about right. 45. We we saw two Valley Center players tackle Imperial kids yeah. when the ball was punted past both the of them. Yeah. There was no reason for it. I mean, you can block them, but you can't tackle them, and that's what they did. So anyway, the ball will be back at the 38-yard line. First and 10 with 251 to go in the game. Valley Center leading Imperial 20-7. to Valley Center trying to run their record to two and two on the season. They can get a win. Their other victory is against the Brawley Wildcats. And that was an 11 game difference, 11 point difference. This is a 13 point difference. Not much difference there. And the Brawley Cibola is very similar to what we saw last week. Right. So first and 10 Valley Center as both teams get back out on the field after talking to their respective head coaches. 
Well, yeah, yes, I, it's already considered a change of possession then after the kick. Right, as soon as the ball was kicked, it's going to go, okay. Yeah, it'll go to them. I was hoping that we get the ball back. I yeah. didn't know there was a change of possession yeah. right at the kick. So first and 10, Valley Center at the 38. Bender at quarterback under center. Sinaways is running back behind him. And I'll send away of a right tackle. Gets hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll get across the 40-yard line or to the 40-yard line for a couple-yard gain. Second down and eight. 78, Diego Valencia. Comes up with the tackle for the Tigers. Took him a while to get up. I thought he... 144 yards rushing for sent away. 21 carries and two touchdowns. All right. It's a good battle up front between the both, both linemen on offense and defense. Second down and eight. And I'll send away over the left side this time. Going to get stacked up the line of scrimmage. He'll still get a couple of yard gain and a third down and six from the 42. Zach Ray able to trip him up. Time out on the field. 2.05 to go in the ball game. Valley Center 20, Imperial 7. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos. Yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great. The service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarape. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. Imperial Valley College is welcoming students back on campus through the fall for an enhanced mix of in-person and online learning and student services. Enrollment is in full swing with classes already in session. Programs will feature an enhanced schedule of in-person labs and hands-on skills training with the option to continue taking a wide range of courses online. Students curious about degrees, available programs, and career paths can learn more by visiting imperial.edu and careered.org. Third down and six for Valley Center at their own 42-yard line. Bender and an option away up the middle, and he's going to get the first down. There's just a big hole right in the middle, right, and he will get out to the 49 and a first down for Valley Center. And that was a huge hole. We could have ran through that hole, but we had only gone two yards. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, twelve. I'm trying to get you a name right now. Oh, Andrew Mitchell. That's who it was. Andrew Mitchell coming up with the tackle. Oh, yeah, Penalty flags go down before yep. the snap of the ball, which is right at the 50-yard line. Penalty is going to go a legal procedure against Valley Center. Yeah. The five-yard penalty will make it a first and 15 and bring it back to their own 45-yard line. Minute 30 to go, and uh, with Valley Center in the ball on a first down, not a whole lot we can do but try to stop it as soon as we can. But Michael will keep, be running quickly. Coach Shaw went out to the field to ask, J.J. Jackson, the reference question. I don't know what it was about. So first and 10 for Valley Center, their own 45-yard line, leading Imperial 20-7. to As we mentioned, the Tigers ravaged by injury and, and sickness. And sick, yeah. And just had a lot of starters out tonight, hand out to send away up the middle. He'll break a couple of tackles of the line of scrimmage, and then get back to the original line of scrimmage of the 50. It'll be a second down and 10 from the 50. 32 and 78. Timeout, Tigers. And the timeout of the field, minute 22 to go in the ball game. It's Valley Center 20, Imperial 7. Start the day off right with your favorite drink from Brick House Coffee. Next door to the Brick House Deli. Brick House Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blend drinks, or cold drinks. Including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, the Brick House Deli with big, bold, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West 8th Road in Imperial. 
the Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! And I'll just send away up the middle. He'll get across the midfield stripe and into Tiger territory to the 46-yard line, a gain of four, third down and six coming up. I've got Andrew Mitchell. The smallest running back we've ever seen get 161 yards against Imperial. You know who he reminds me of? That kid from uh, Gila Ben. First year we played him. Yeah, you're right. I don't remember the name. The Gila Ridge, yeah. Uh, Third down and six. The late handoff sent away up the middle. Oh, He's going to get a first down and did some. He's breaking open to the 30-yard line. Finally going to be brought down inside the 30. Wow, they're giving him a generous mark all the way to the 25. Okay. 21-yard gain on that one. Again, there's just a big hole there big that he's yeah. taking advantage of. And now all of a sudden, he's pushing 200 yards. I wish I could play that one back because I didn't see any linebackers around No, there. no. He just, there's a huge hole and he ran, and that'll be the end of the game. They're going to let the clock run out. Yeah. Ten yeah. seconds to go in this one, and that'll be it. Valley Center is going to come out of the way of the Imperial Valley with a 2-2 two and two record after a 20-7 to seven victory tonight over the Imperial Tigers. The Tigers have dropped to 1-3, and three, and we'll recap the scoring and look at the stats as our post-game show continues in just a moment. Eight and Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's a place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, keg, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a buck with eight gallons of gas for diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Aiton Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. Imperial Valley College is welcoming students back on campus through the fall for an enhanced mix of in-person and online learning and student services. Enrollment is in full swing with classes already in session. Programs will feature an enhanced schedule of in-person labs and hands-on skills training with the option to continue taking a wide range of courses online. Students curious about degrees, available programs, and career paths can learn more by visiting imperial.edu and careered.org. Start the day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee, next door to the Brickhouse Deli. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from, hot drinks, blend drinks, or cold drinks, including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, the Brickhouse Deli with big, bold, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West 8th Road in Imperial. We all love an expert. We've got a roof expert, a plumber, a great mechanic. The list goes on. Imperial Valley Allstate agent Julie Oliver is your local insurance expert that knows the community. You'll get advice that you can trust to help you select coverage that's best for you. So whether it's protection for your car, home, boat, motorcycle, or more, Julie is here to help. Call your local Allstate agent Julie Oliver today at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Julie says, please stay safe and healthy. You are in good hands. Subject terms, conditions, and availability. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! Final score here in Imperial Valley Center, 20, Imperial 7. And here's how the scoring went. With 11-17 to go in the first half of play, Valley Center got on the board first on a 68-yard run by Lucas Inouye on a two-play 74-yard drive. Extra point by his brother, Jeremiah, was good, and it was 7-0. to zero. They would take a 14 nothing halftime lead in on a touchdown just before the half with 12 seconds yeah. to go in the first half on a 10-play 73-yard drive. 
capped by the 12 yard touchdown pass from Marlon Bender to Kevin Garcia. Extra point was good and it was 14 to 0 out time score. Valley Center in the third quarter would make it 20 to nothing on a nine play 54 yard drive. Got by a three yard touchdown run as second of the night for Lucas Fenaway. Extra point had a bad snap. It was no good and it was 20 to seven. But the Tigers showed some spark in the latter moments of the fourth quarter on a three play 18 yard drive after a Tiger Ochoa fumble recovery. An eight yard touchdown run by Jeremiah Naylor. Extra point by Jose Robles was good. That gives us the final score of 20 to 7. For the winning Jaguars, Marlon Bender would complete, uh, let's see, 8 of 11 passes for 129 yards and a touchdown. But their big offensive statistic would be Lucas Sinaway. 25 carries, 182 yards. And if you look at him, there's like, there's no way. <laughs> There's no way he can make that yardage up the middle. That's the problem. If he was super fast around the side, okay, you could see it. No, he got his yardage up the middle, up the middle. 182 yards, 25 carries. Marlon Bender, 6 carries, 16 yards. Corey Villalobos, 1 carry for minus 2. So 129 yards passing, 196 rushing for 325. Wow. Great job right there. Front line for the Jaguars. Oh, yeah. They did a good job of, of breaking the holes open for center away, and he's just a good, hard runner. Oh, yeah. We'll look at the Imperial staff in just a moment. Eight and Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's the place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice-cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, kegs, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a buck with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Eight and Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. Imperial Valley College is welcoming students back on campus through the fall for an enhanced mix of in-person and online learning and student services. Enrollment is in full swing with classes already in session. Programs will feature an enhanced schedule of in-person labs and hands-on skilled training with the option to continue taking a wide range of courses online. Students curious about degrees, available programs, and career paths can learn more by visiting imperial.edu and careered.org. When it comes to great Mexican food, El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial should be number one because they do it right. From special quesadillas to 17 different burritos, not including eight different breakfast burritos. Yeah, they have one you will love. The food is great. The service even better. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at El Zarape. Still offering curbside service. Call 760-355-4435. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial. And for the Tigers, C.J. Tiernan started out the ball game. He would end up going 5 of 13 for 49 yards in the game. But the second half, mostly we saw freshman Reese Vendiola. He would finish the game 6 of 11 for 81 yards. The Tigers with 130 yards in the passing department in the game. And rushing, let's see, we had uh, 38 and 20, 68. We had uh, Jeremiah Nader really showing something in the second half. He had five carries in the second half for 20 yards, but he had that eight-yard touchdown run that was just yes. superlative. The Tigers would end up with 68 yards rushing in the game with their 130 passing. So just under 200 yards of 198 unofficially in the ball game. So it's... Uh, one of those that if we don't have the injuries and we don't have the sickness that really clobbered the team this week, especially in starters, that uh, this would have been a much more and the kick, closer game than what it was. But this kid he did a good job with the kicking. He did. He, he did a good job kicking. He, okay. he made the extra point that he was intending to do. He missed the field goal, but I think the snap wasn't yeah. exactly perfect. Well, he's from the, from the other side. He's right. Right. You get right. That right. Tiernan. Tiernan's used to, to a right-footed right kicker. Kick he's a left-footed. Yeah. You try to do that quickly in, in the last minute, and that's just very difficult to do. So the final score here will be a 20 to, not, or 20 to 7, 7 game in favor of Valley Center. And we'll look to see if we have some updated scores that we can get through. Uh, Raleigh ended up beating Cibola by a final of 49 to 8. Final score of Vincent Memorial 33, Castle Park 13. Ooh. 
Another close one is Central Vista. It was Central 35, Vista 28. Final? That's the final. That's in the fourth quarter late in the game. So it's a seven-point game up there in Vista. Calexico leading Yuma 14-6 to six in the fourth quarter. So Calexico, Bulldogs. As soon as I mentioned something about the Bulldogs, John Marino shows up. <laughs> the garnet and gold, right, John? They didn't hear me. You said he <laughs> just mentioned the Bulldogs, and you yeah, I said the garnet and gold, and you show up. <laughs> Oville 42, Maranatha 10, a final score in that one. The Vikings 4 and That's 0. Awesome. The That's only awesome. unbeaten team in the county. And we'll be going over to the Carrot Capital in about three weeks, I think. We'll be yes. over there next week. Yes. We'll be up at, we, we start a, a five or five or six game road trip. Five. Five in a row. We'll be five up in at, a row. we'll be on the road. Yeah, we'll be up at, uh, in Spring Valley next week to see the Monta Vista Monarchs. That'll be next week's game. And we'll be going to Heater Ridge, Ridge, who has a female head coach. I Did you that. see that? Jennifer Slaughter. Yeah, she is the head coach at Heater Ridge. They're playing their first game tonight, though. Scheduling, I'm not sure what. They only have nine games scheduled. And tonight was their first game. Really? Yeah. Usually, the Yuma teams started right, before, start before us. Yeah. Right. At least one or two games. So we'll be at Heater Ridge and Yuma on the 24th, followed the next week. And right now, instead of a Thursday night game against Tollville. Yes. Okay. And that's Thursday night game. Shorter of, uh, referees. of referees, right? Yeah. So we'll be at Holville for that one on Thursday night, September 30th, and then we'll be starting league play at Brawley on October 8th, and then at Central October 15th, and then come home the final two games: homecoming against Calexico on October 22nd, and then the Johnny Romero helmet game on October 29th. That will be a home game too. So we got two home games now. Now we're gone for. Five games, and then we'll be the final two of the regular season, and hopefully good enough to make the playoffs. I sure hope. So. I yeah. sure if we can get everybody together, I yep. think we'll be okay. Yep, I think, I think so we'll too. be okay. And Reese, I think Tom, is, and I love that. You think JP now as a receiver? Yeah, I, I, I think, think there's a lot of things. Put him one on one with the defender. I agree. I think good. there's a lot of things you could do with him as a wide receiver with with more maturity coming from. From Reese Vendiola, yeah. you know, yeah. freshman. Right. He can improve. Right. He got to him exactly. understand more and more. So I think if we can see that, I think that things may get rolling a little bit. Or bring Reese and not Reese, I'm sorry, CJ in motion. Right. Like I said, well, just sweet. We he's, he, he's got some wheels, and I'd like to see it. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors for being with us here yeah. 21, Imperial Quarterback Club, the Brick House Deli, Aiden Express, El Zarape Restaurant, Imperial Tiger Football Association. Broken Yoke Cafe. When I don't have to work on Saturdays, with the Broken Yoke. You know, Imperial Valley College and Julie Oliver. Sure. Being with us here in this 22 years. Happy to have you back. Oh, I'm so glad to be back. Turn towards this season. Do you guys think Coach Evangelist was also at first game? Yeah. yeah. I, I had no idea he was in Mexico in 74. He was in, in Mexico in 74 and coached against him when he was. Was this down at Calexico? Well, went through, correct? Yes, yes. I told him that afterwards. I said, not at the same time. They weren't there at the same time. Okay. But yeah, Joe went to Rubido, and I said, yeah, that's where Pat McGee went to Rubido High School before yeah. he moved around different places. So, yeah, so it's kind of fun. It was like, I haven't seen Joe in a while, and uh, met up when I was doing TV years ago and everything. And so, you know, friendship through that, but it was yeah. nice having him with me. and. And it was fun doing the game. It was. Me. He did a yeah. great job. did a great job. So. Then that, i got to mention that picture that you posted on Facebook. Um, you and Trish? Yes. Yeah. Now, what was yeah. kind of funny, too, about that, yeah, we did that with Jerry Lewis, and he was carting up, as he always would do anyway. <laughs> but uh, it was fun to, to go there in, in uh, Las Vegas and uh, and do those promos with him. That's what we were doing. Was a, we were doing a promo for the uh, – Muscular dystrophy oh, at that time. Oh, that's how you guys did Right, that's what okay. we were doing. We were doing a you promo with him. Okay. And it impressed me because each different station that would go up, he would have a sheet that would have something about the, that area. He would just look at it for a moment and then go off and do a 30-second commercial with you. You know, it was, yeah, just, it was awesome. pretty amazing to watch him do that. So that was kind of neat. But, yeah, I was doing the muscular dystrophy when we'd go on those trips. I met the uh, uh, niece. So, yeah. 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 And, 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 Oh, that's the first fence, right? Yeah, she sure did. Yeah, and that's right. Montreal, I think so. It was fun. Awesome. And I, I think one of the things, one of the things that was really funny, I just thought about it when I was doing the telephone, 
get people to donate money, you know, just to pledge money and to try to do it. I did Macarena once on there. We got money out of that. But one of them, I said, came in and I would read them back after sucking and healing them. And then reading out with a high rail. I got passed out just as a helium. I was like, look, I can stop for a second here. It was pretty fun. But, but it was fun. I'm a fan. Kirsch was back in uh, Nashville at a concert. The girl that I work with at CHP was at the same concert. I'm sure they didn't even know it. Blake Shelton concert. So I have to tell Eddie when she gets back that, that uh, one of my old friends was also there, too. That about do it for me. And we'll wrap her up. And uh, final score again, Valley Center 20. Imperial 7, we thank you for tuning in with us tonight on KXO Radio, AM 1230, El Central California, and on KXORadio.com. We'll be on the Internet only next week. Tune in tomorrow night for Southwest and COFA at 645, and we'll return it back to the main studios now and Gabe Lamuse. KXO AM 1230, the best oldies on the radio.